All right, we are live. It is Thursday night live stream. Tonight's topic is how has the Manosphere failed men? I've got a great panel and I've got more coming on. We're going to start. We've got Steve the Dean Williams, the man mindset. Steve, how are you doing tonight? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me on for a minute, man. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad to have you here. We got Man and Out Gene. How are you doing tonight, bud? I'm doing great. All is well. And Gonzo. Amazing. 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 Good. 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 <laughs> well, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to quick start off with we do have Anthony. Anthony Dream Johnson will be coming on shortly. So just wanted to let everybody know. Hang in there. He's got some technical difficulties, but he's going to be jumping on shortly. So the question that I call it my patent question is how has the manosphere failed men? And my response to this a while ago was that um, I think that most guys that enter the manosphere is through some sort of trauma, a divorce, a breakup, something that happened in your life and you're looking to other men to guide you. And we all know that men, it's it's difficult for us to reach out to other guys. And as a man, it is difficult to basically invest in yourself and reach out to a group of guys that you think that can help you. So I think there's been some issues lately. There was a recent video um, by Donovan Sharp. And again, I consider Donovan a friend of mine that um, basically said, uh, you know, why can't we all get along? And I have a take on this. And my take on this is that, no, we're, we are going to disagree and I'm okay with it. I don't think everybody's going dis- to agree. Also, I think that it was mentioned that we all have the same end goal. And now I'm going to disagree with that 100%. I don't think everybody in the manosphere has an end goal. I don't consider myself a Manosphere content creator. I consider myself a Manosphere content consumer. Even though I've done interviews with some of the some of the biggest Manosphere guys, as far as Steve, the Dean, you name it, there's a list of guys that I've done interviews with. And it was to reach out and understand their philosophies about dating, lifestyle, manhood, things like that. So, um, Again, now we'll go back to a video that was yesterday with Bulldog Mindset, and John Sanmez will be coming on here shortly also. So I just want to let everybody know, Anthony Johnson, John San- Sanmez will be coming on, Bulldog Mindset, to kind of go over some of these things. So this video was, to me, um, again, as a content consumer, okay, not a manager content creator, even though... My channel is about masculinity, and it is about being a man, but we we talk about all sorts of things here. So looking at it from, I'll say, an outsider's view, I looked at it as, you know, people can say it wasn't an attack, and I do look at it as it was an attack. And, and the reason I say that is, is because... <laughs> In, in the video, there's a couple other things. In, in the video, they talked about MGTOW Dictionary. And MGTOW Dictionary is a channel that actually, I'm not, I'm not really about doxing people. In fact, I don't, I, don't, I don't approve of that. And But if you are a content creator, you've got to expect the worst. So that's one thing. When you put your, put your ass on the line, you should expect that people are going to want to find out about you because they're following you. Now, there are going to be guys that are, you know, part of the manosphere. We have all the different factions, whether it be pickup, style, game, um, um, lifestyle, red pill, blue pill. Um, I don't know if blue pill is really a, a <laughs> it's really a, a manosphere of content, but you have all these different, these different factions. And even black pill, is part of the manosphere, whether we like it or not. I think it's necessary that all these opinions and all these views are are really looked at. And I think it's important that everybody gets a chance to say their piece. So, but I think that um, this recent video with Donovan and, and with Bulldog really raised a lot of feathers in the sphere. So I'm gonna shoot off, because I know Steve's not gonna be on here long, but I'm going to shoot off to Steve and ask him his point of view on that whole situation. Well, first off, thank you for having me on, man. And I uh, appreciate 
Uh, I, I love Bulldog. Much respect to Bulldog. Uh, I got opportunity to talk to him. Uh, I think the guy's a great man. Great. He does great in everything he does. Uh, I'm not even upset at what Bulldog said. And I'm not really upset what Donovan said. But there's a few things that I want to know. Why do you give a fuck about another man like that? If that motherfucker is the man that he say the fuck he is, why don't you let that bitch stand on this motherfucking ten toes? Why the fuck do you got to bring my name in this shit? And Donovan, no. We cool. And he know I called you on the phone and I told you to get with me because I, 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 let's see, here's the thing. I ain't no motherfucking gangster. I ain't none of that shit. I ain't no n- but I can be one. Excuse my language, but keep this shit all the way real. I hit him up on the back end. I sent him a message. I waiting for that motherfucker to get at me so him and I can have a real powwow on the back end. Because that shit he's saying right there, man, the same shit I'm saying right now is the same shit I'm going to say to this motherfucking ass. And, it, and, it's, and it's no, it's no uh, I'm not mad. I'm letting you know right now. I'm not mad. We cool. I'm, I have no problem with Donovan Sharp. But where I got a problem is I got a problem with another man defending another man like y'all fucking or some shit like that. Fuck that nigga's brand. And if you got a problem with what I'm saying, I'm going to tell you the same shit if you call me, if you man enough to call me. I, I got, I already got the recorded. I got the, the, the proof that I called you. I got the email text that I texted you take it at me. So you either going to do it or not. I don't give a fuck if you do or don't, but the same thing I'm going to say. See, this is the problem. See, a lot of motherfuckers want to play uh, like they about being a man and shit. It's like, Tony, you know, I've been in this bitch for like 30 years, man. I mean, I, I don't even have to say that shit. I've been in this motherfucker a long time. And no, I ain't like you. I ain't part of no manosphere. I've, I've always walked my own motherfucking way. I have my own path. I ain't no metal and none of that other shit. And Donovan, no. And every time he always talk about me and Allen, he always know that Allen and I, King's English, we some bad motherfuckers in the game. So he already has already said that. But with that being said, as a man, you got to you got to be man enough to at least give another man heads up if you're gonna put my name and shit. That's all I'm saying. That's what we're gonna be talking about. Cause I'm not that motherfucker. I don't. I don't play that. I don't, I'm just. You know. Like I said I stay in my lane. But if you gonna put my name in shit, then I expect you to call me and explain why you put my name in shit that don't even involve your motherfucking ass. What the fuck does what that got to do with that motherfucker from the Sudan, whose name ain't Myron Gaines, who is a fucking try to be a fitness mother fact matter of fact Tony, two years ago. That bitch was sitting in the crowd watching us on stage. Now, all of a sudden, he in the game. Now, all of a sudden, he know what the fuck he talking about. Now, all of a sudden, I'm fucking with his brand. No, I ain't fucking with his brand. But I told him in Solo 84, on the back end, what the fuck is going to go down when we see each other. I ain't gonna, I'm not no threats or nothing like that. Just keep it real. I put it on the back end. And like I said, as men, like Donovan said, we always got, you should always handle shit on the back end. That's what I did. Handle it on the back end. That motherfucker sent me a text message firing my ass. He didn't even fucking call my ass. But that, but you're supposed to be a man and shit. But like I say, I'm just waiting for you to call me. Because everything I'm saying right now is I'm going to say it in your motherfucker. I'll say it in your face. I'll say it on the fucking phone. You know me, Donovan. You know me. You know I don't play. I'm not like all these. I ain't like all these Tomasis and motherfuckers that talk all that kitty cat shit, dog. I'm not about that life, man. You should know. And this ain't no threat. It ain't no threat. It's all good. It's no threat. And I'm just letting him know. He know. He know what the deal is. He know motherfuckers that are real, real motherfuckers versus these fake content creators talking shit. So I'm not even sweating. Like I say, I will say it again. Ain't got no problem with what he said. My problem is what he's saying is he put my name on the street. He put my business on the street. And you know the first rule of the motherfucking game, Donovan, especially in the black streets, that you don't put a motherfucker's business on the street without even giving that motherfucker a heads up. So that's what we got to talk about. 
because you you think this is like some little house on the prairie type shit where you want to go ahead and look again anthony can defend himself anthony what's going on with rollo and anthony that's none of my business i've always stayed out of it i, I respect anthony i appreciate anthony whatever they do they do but you've never seen me tony ever bring up their situation on any interview you never seen me ever put their business on an interview and all this why can't we have this kumbaya shit i'm gonna tell you why we can't donovan and i'm gonna tell you this when you call me because I'm, I'm gonna do the same thing i'm not i'm just being honest reason we can't have this kumbaya shit is because i don't fuck with bitches i'm just being honest I don't fuck with weak motherfuckers. Because Donovan, you know, Modern Life Day knows, all you motherfuckers know on that side, the motherfuckers I roll with, you know y'all know what real motherfucking game is. You know the motherfuckers I roll with. Rosebud, Bitter Dose. Been in the game for about, what, 40-something years. In the streets. EO, streets. Lucario, streets. 1950, streets. Oh, and Bulldog. Bulldog got game. So I, I only fuck with real... Hey, matter of fact, Tony Bruno's brother, George Bruno. Streets. That means they've been there before this internet bullshit kicked off. I am, I am not a pickup artist. I've never had a pickup artist. I've never followed a fucking pickup artist. And I've never been taught from a pickup artist. You have, brother. Now, there's no knock. You know where you came from. It's no knock. I ain't here to knock you. But you know I'm not that that goofy ass shit that y'all are doing. And if y'all want to tell these young men not to get married, fucking scared, courts, women, all that goofy shit, say that shit. But what I'm saying is keep my fucking name out of your mouth when it comes to something that don't deal with you. If I'm talking about another man's brain, well, here's my question. If, if you if you mad at me right, for or if you mad on the show, who needs to die? No, hold on one second, sorry, Andy. Sorry. If you if, yeah. if you need to get at me, if you need to get at me because my business, then why the fuck ain't you putting Rolo's business is fucking over Anthony? Why don't you put that shit out? But you ain't doing that shit. You want to make it like Anthony's the, the bad guy, right? You want to put all that business on the street, but yet you seem like you're protecting those bitches on that side. But see, that's what I keep telling you, man. I'm not that dude. So like I said, Donovan, if you listen to this, I already called you because you said... Well, let, why don't we? You, my door is always open. You could call me, and we can talk about it on the back end. I, I called you. I left you a message, and the same thing I'm saying right now is the same motherfucking shit I'm gonna say to your ass on the back end. Don't put my fucking business on the street. What I say and what the fuck I do is none of your concern. I don't see. I don't kiss and worry about what another man's doing. I stay on my motherfucking lane. So what I'm saying to you, Donovan, Nick to Nick, then I'm saying to you, look, man, we good. But we got to talk because that shit you did, that was some bitch shit. And I'm going to tell you that was some bitch shit because I never said anything about your motherfucking ass. I never said anything about you. And I will not say anything about you. Everything I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you on the back end. And you best believe if you call me, I'm going to do that shit. You know this nigga going to do that shit. Now, excuse my language, guys. But no, 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 no. Yeah, it's just Donovan, he's looking at me right now. I'm talking to you, Donovan, and I'm not playing around. Are we cool. I sent you a message. Call me. We'll talk. But other than that, man, leave my fucking mouth out and fuck that motherfucker. I yeah. fuck that motherfucker. It's it's uncensored here tonight, Steve, and I can I can feel your passion. And, and the reason I'm going to say that I can yeah. feel it is because when – you can say something, okay? Now, can say, oh, well, talk to me. And I did notice this. And, and I'm not coming down on Donovan. I'm not. But when you say something like, let's be men and talk about it, and then you bring that shit up, that's why I was, I was, kind, of, I was kind of irritated by it. Again, as a consumer, not as a creator, but, as a, but a consumer. So I, I, can, I can see your... Um, I can see your passion in this. In this, well, I, mean, I just want to say one more thing before you finish. I'm not mad at Donovan. Mm -hmm. Got to talk. That's all. We, look, I, I don't see the one thing y'all learn about me when it comes to this kind of. I don't like. I don't like airing this shit out on the front end. And shit. I ain't about all that shit. 
I'm just waiting for that motherfucker to call me. And when he call me, we gonna chop this shit up. He know. That's all I gotta say. Well, I want to welcome Anthony Dream Johnson. Anthony, this is your first time on the stream, and it is awesome to have you here, brother. Fantastic. Uh, I appreciate you having me on the show, man. Sorry about being late. I had technical difficulties. Uh, my video got sorted out. Happy no worries. And see the passion and the fire is fucking great. Uh, I'm a little bit further than Steve. Uh, Donovan Sharp's dead to me. Donovan Sharp uh, continually shits his pants, shits the bed, shits him in public, apparently, airing other people's business like we've been hearing here. Uh, some of the fuckers, a complete scumbag, called him a scumbag on uh, John Samez's show yesterday. It, it was really fun to see him get all triggered and see his voice crack like a little bitch, like he's like 12 years old in the middle school and shit. Uh, that was a great time watching that go down, just uh, you know, trolling from the chat like that. He's he's dead to me. I suspected back in the summer when he dropped out of 21 convention and blamed and 22 convention, and he blamed Candace Owens and Stefan Molyneux, all this fake news garbage, which didn't even make sense. Candace Owens is not a speaker you know it's all, all garbage anyway i knew back in the summer of 2020 that he had jumped the shark he had jumped ship and uh yesterday what we saw was which is you know pissing a lot of people off like steve here you know this fucking fire uh yeah it's the true colors of who donovan sharp is he's a piece of shit he's scumbag and i think slowly the people in the manosphere are going to come see that now and that's why you know donovan is always at the center of drama he's always starting shit you know i didn't start nothing with donovan you know he attacked me uh, back in January, I think, the end of January, a few weeks ago. I said nothing. I didn't want any part of it. I'm like, yeah, fuck this loser. Who cares? He wants to come attack me with some fake bullshit. I'm just going to drop it and leave it and walk away. And that's what I did for like a month now. But he goes again yesterday, dropping more fucking fake news, more fucking bullshit. More, uh, and I have hard evidence of this stuff. I was showing John Simon some of this stuff, the Candace Owens stuff that he denied on air yesterday. So yeah, Donovan Sharp has totally jumped the shark. He's a total fraud. He's a total loser. I have zero respect for this guy. Uh, the trash he talked yesterday was stunning. It pissed mm. off a lot of guys behind the scenes. Mm. It was absolutely fake. Some of it was defamatory. Some of it, you know, Donovan Sharp, for example, he was actually campaigning to have speakers removed from 21 convention after he dropped out in 2020 by blaming Candace Owens and Stefan Molyneux in some logically dubious way. And I have evidence of this too. Uh, the speakers he went to to try to get them to pull out of 21 convention. So all that fake nice guy crap you saw yesterday was totally delusional. It was totally false. It was totally fake. I was truly shocked and disgusted, even having suspected a lot of this beforehand and having had that evidence, uh, some of it, you know, the campaigning to remove speakers, for example, which is contract interference, which is illegal, and you can get sued for that shit. We yeah, had Donovan's piece of shit. That's my opening statement. So let, for it. Let, let me ask you a question. I want to say the same question. I think we talked. I don't think I talked this, but there's a show called MGTOW Dictionary. Oh, yeah, <clears> I found it actually... I find it very entertaining. Yeah, and I was exactly. saying that the 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 black pill community is still a part of the umbrella of the manosphere. And I think it is a necessary part Sorry. because everybody has their corner. Regardless if people agree with it, it's necessary. Okay. So we talked about doxing. Doxing, if anybody doesn't know, doxing means when your personal information or your name is put out in public. Is that With, like when Rolo Tomasi doxed 50 guys to the New York Times, a feminist reporter? Yeah, that's and, kind of and yeah that's, that's doxing. Yeah. And I was there. I was oh, there. Yeah, yeah. I, I was there. I was physically there. So yeah. I, I know all about that. So, again, if there's anybody watching, Donovan's watching, you want to come on? You're welcome to come on. Um, I'm trying to moderate this right now. I'm not trying to perpetuate any type of drama, but mm -hmm. I think that when – you're going to go and say somebody doxed you and you give the name of the person that doxed you, you doxed yourself even more because MGTOW Dictionary is a fairly small channel. I think they had, they're about twice the size of my channel. They're so it's 3, not 000, a channel. thousand subs. Yeah. So it's on not... MGTOW Dictionary, would you mind? Uh, <laughs> the, just quick comment on MGTOW Dictionary channel. Like you, I find them entertaining. My opinion of MGTOW Dictionary is similar to yours, Tony. Um, you know, I'm not, I don't, I don't watch all the shows. I've watched very few of them, to be honest. I just kind of like pop in and out when people send them to me, the links. And sometimes they go too far. They went after Rolo Tomasi's family and I thought that was too far. And I tweeted about that. I said, I don't support that. That's like way too far. Them going after Rolo though and Cooper and all these fucking losers, like that's fun. And I think that's really good. And that's why, you know, there's, you're saying it's a necessary part of the manosphere and you're right. What the MGTOW dictionary guys are onto and they go after what they call the dating roaches, these frauds. 
there's kind of a deep state uh, underbelly, like this total like shitbag part of the manosphere. Where all they do is defraud guys and they lie and they manipulate and do all this really twisted shit, and then cry victim in public, right? They attack people and then when they get punched in the face, they're like, "Oh man, that bully! Can you believe he punched me in the face?" It's like, yeah, you're a piece of shit and you lie. So what do you think is going to happen? Anyway, those guys are on to. There's been for 20 years now. There's been this underbelly deep state of the manosphere. It's very similar to politics. And it's very disgusting. It's very manipulative. It's very toxic. And those guys are after the right kind of people. You know, however, however fucked up the black pill dudes are, however fucked up that wing of the manosphere is, there's a reason they target those guys. They're not targeting like uh, George Bruno, really. They don't target me. Uh, they don't target a lot of, you know, they don't target really Coach Greg. They don't target Coach Red Pill, Terrence Pop. There's a thousand content creators in the manosphere they could go after, but they don't. They go after these really toxic shitbags that lie a lot and manipulate and do all this really sketchy bullshit and fuck fat women and all kinds of disgusting stuff. So those guys aren't necessary and they're going after the really toxic wing of the manosphere that pretends to be very positive but dress up in this fake red pill crap. They're dispelling basically the blue pill of the manosphere. A lot of guys in the manosphere are mano sheep, I call them. And they have like a Disneyland kind of blue pill fantasy of the manosphere. They're like the feminists are out there and these hoes. They're going to fuck up my life. They're on the outside and these these simps and these soy boys and in the manosphere wall together, right? It's all like we got each other's backs. It doesn't work like that. A lot of these guys are frauds. Roll Tomasi is a great example. That dude doxed over 50 men in real life to a feminist reporter at the New York Times. That's not just wrong. That's not just unethical. That's high treason. There's nothing worse you could do. If Terrence Pop or George Bruno or Coach Greg Adams tomorrow had a meetup at a bar and last minute docks the location to a feminist reporter at a mainstream media news outlet, it's literally the worst thing you could do short of like a bomb going off. It's the worst thing you can do. And that's the level of toxic fucking garbage that actually goes on in the manosphere that the MGTOW dictionary dudes, however fucked up and weird they are, it's what they're after. Their head is pointed in the right direction. Their attitude, you know, a little off center is in the right direction. Their heart's in the right place. They're fed up and they're disgusted with this ongoing establishment that's disgusting in the manosphere. And people hate me for fighting it. You know, it's the same shit. You know, I go after these people and they attack me in public and they're like, oh, dream, why you gotta be such an asshole? It's like, actually, these people fucking attack me for no reason. They come swinging, then they get their teeth knocked out with funny ass memes and then everybody's crying. It's like, fuck you, man. Anyway, and rant. No, that's, that's a great rant. Steve, you got anything to say on that? No, no. I mean, it, 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 hey, as I would, I, I wasn't there to see what happened. And, and again, if it happened, Anthony hit it on the head, man. I, I just stay in my lane, man. I just, I, I I'm, I'm team a one. I roll with him. He's been always been authentic. He's been real. And, and a lot of these guys don't understand that, you know, he's getting the short end of the stick because these people are, uh, don't understand the hard work that he put in to even get these guys over here for them to turn around and stab him in the back and talk shit about him. So, I mean, I, I, I just, you know, it, it just is what it is, T. It is what it is. At this point, man, like, I appreciate that, Steve, but people stabbing me in the back, like... I know. I've worked, I've worked with almost 200 speakers at this point. Anthony, bring up your volume for oh, some yeah. reason. Uh, how's that? Better? Yeah, much better. Yeah, yeah. So I've worked with almost 200 speakers in the manosphere at this point. You know, psychologists, dating coaches, authors, Navy SEALs, like all kinds of people for 15 fucking years now. And, you know, a small percentage of them, 97, 98 percent of them are amazing men that I have positive long term relationships with five, 10, 15 years at a time. Right. Yes. Like really serious shit. These are men I take. I'd literally take a bullet for if I yes. had to. I would take a bullet for you guys. Yeah. Partly because I'm as younger than you and I'm probably going to survive better than you would, just to be honest. <laughs> but I really would. I really would. Yeah, that's real. But that's there's real. a there's a couple percentage of these guys that are, by statistical probability, just going to be fucked up scumbags. And yeah. that's what you see in this wing of the manosphere. And that's why the MGTOW guy, dictionary guys, are so riled up. I'm sure they could do a show just shit-talking anybody, right? They could pick on anybody for any fucking reason they want. But what do they do? They target the same guys over and over and over again. The fucking MLDs and the Rolo Tomasis and the Coopers and all these fucking losers. Yeah. They go after the same super toxic element because they're so fake and they're phony. They're politicians. They're not manosphere leaders. They're not authors. They're not content creators. They're frauds. They're phonies and they're fucking losers. And those dudes, those MGTOW fucking black pillars, these hardcore fucking weirdos, they know. They know because I guess they're about as fucked up as the Rolo guys. That's how they spot them. 
takes one to no one. That's why they're fucking, there's like a little miniature civil war going on. I think it's beautiful. It's a great thing, man. Yeah. It's it's like the manosphere cleaning itself, right? It's cleaning why, itself out. Why, why is everybody so, con well, not, I'm going to say, why is Donovan so concerned about everybody getting along? And and he talked about and and he talked about the end goal, but I don't see a a unified end goal oh, from a, from a content consumer, not a content creator. I thought you were going to say con artist for a second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all fake. I mean, John Samez and Coach Rick Adams talk about unity, and they're serious and they're sincere and they're genuine. And I'm I'm in that camp. You know, if people hate me for doing what I do and this and that. I'm taking bullets and knife stabs and bombs from the back all day long, whatever, man. But those guys, their head and their heart is in the right place. But the guys like Donovan and Rolo and these other losers, it's all bullshit. It's all just politician talk, right? Like, look at the Democrats now. They're like, unity, unity, unity. And then they're like, I'm actually going to have, on MSNBC, they call for drone strikes on Trump supporters, domestic terrorists, right? AOC, crazy ass little hoe, has her blacklist she's going to go on for Trump supporters, those are the same people gaslighting you. They're like, we want unity. They don't want unity. They want conformity. They want control and they want money. It's been the same shit for 20 fucking years in the Manosphere. These fucking losers with their fake preaches for fucking unity. No. Who in the world, name one man in the fucking planet who is alive today, who has done more to unite and build the Manosphere than me? Name anybody. Anybody. Anybody in the chat watching? Anybody watching this later in the comments? Anybody live in the show? I don't know fucking anybody who's done more than I have to build this community and unite it and actually connect the leaders together and the men over and over and over and over again. In America, in Europe, in Australia, and on the internet, year round, every fucking day, by the millions. Me. And I get stabbed in the fucking back for it and shit on in public all day fucking long. You know why? Because I love this community. I fucking grew up in it. 17 years old, 2005, I found this community. It has built my life into what it is today, and I'm very proud of it. And this community has given it to me, and I've given back to it over and over and over again. And I will fight to the fucking death for it. And these fucking frauds and these fat fuck losers that lie in public and defame and distort bullshit endlessly. The shit we saw yesterday was some of the worst I had ever seen in my life. Disgusting, despicable, fucking horrible. Fraudulent BS, man. I, I want to go to Gonzo. Gonzo is, is, we'll call him new to the manosphere. He's is the newest probably guy that's on this panel that has consumed manosphere content what do you think of this what's your thought process then we're gonna go to man gonzo i think his video is frozen oh he's in texas wherever there he, is. he is well <clears throat> well let me go to man then oh there well, he go is go ahead go ahead am i back yep all right, I, I I I missed what happened there a bit at the end. So Gonzo, what's your take on this? You're new to the Manosphere. You're new to Manosphere content. When I say Manosphere content, there's a big umbrella of content, whether it be pickup, game, um, lifestyle, um, fitness. What is your what is your take on infighting in the Manosphere? Okay. Hang on a second. I I missed that again. So what? So so what, one more time. What is your take on the infighting in the manosphere? In other words, Anthony's defending himself. He's he's put out a product for for a long time since he was seventeen years old. So, what do you think of infighting and attacking another person's brand? Well, um, the way I see it is that. And because I've seen this happen in all types of communities, obviously, like you're not going to escape the the backstabbing and the drama. There's always going to be people like Anthony said, like there's a statistical, basically a constant, you know, there's always going to be these people. But the way I see it is that there's always going to be um, ideological differences as well. There's going to be, you know, conflicting views. There's going to be conflicting ideas. This is a war on ideas. Um, you know, and here's the thing between, you know, I mean, like I'm trying to think of like, you know, names right now, like, like you have somebody like Michael Foster and then you have Jesse Lee Peterson 
and you have uh, Elliot Hulse, and you have all these guys, and and you know, like all these guys have their own their own views and their own take on different subjects, and they don't agree. But there, but there's peace there, from what I understand. You know, everybody exists, and that's fine. And if there, and if there, you know, if there is a problem, you know, it, like that's the thing. It's like I don't even. I don't even know cuz cuz personally with this type of drama stuff with this type of um you know all this uh you know backstabbing all this talking behind the scenes all this stuff is like I just you know yeah I mean just get, I just walk away from it you know um I don't you know like 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 what are you going to do about it you kind of just have to uh not be angry about it you just say hey this is wrong you speak out and you say hey this is wrong and it doesn't have to be a fucking war (laughs) but but it does it ends up becoming a war a lot of the time a lot of people take it because they're threatened a lot of people do get angry they are emotional like women and they get angry and um and they want to start a war and so then you have these massive explosions um, like, you know, like something like, like, you know, I could, I could name names, but there's other, there's other, you know, uh, fraud fathers of the past who have, uh, <laughs> who have uh, fallen away, but you know, it's like, what can you that, do except say, I Hey, can, yeah. can I can jump in on Gonzo? Uh, yeah. so I've thought about that too. Like I've seen having been involved, uh, at an organization level, not just as a mm-hmm. consumer, like I didn't join this community and, and I was like, I'm going to lead the manosphere and mm-hmm. build events and do, you know, whatever shows and channels. I was just some young kid that wanted to get laid. Uh, but over time you see the people, the revolving door. And that's, what's most frustrating. Like some people say like, Oh, you should get, you know, competition, competing events, blah, blah, blah. Oh, did my video freeze? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, I look retarded. Uh, give me a second. I'll fix it. Uh, audio's fine and video should be fine in a second. It's been a fun video night with this stuff. <laughs> nope. Almost. Boom. Back. Anyway, my point was the revolving door of create. Uh, not only, it actually happens on a couple levels. You have Manosphere dudes who find the community. They get girlfriends, they fuck off, and they end up back in the manosphere like a couple years later. It happens over and over and over again because they don't learn anything. They learn like just enough to like bust a nut in a girl, and then that du- that girl ropes them into a relationship. Then the girl runs her ass over, and they get back. They're just back on the fucking. It's a merry. It's a fucking circle of life, right? But the content creators do it too, and that part is the gayest part of all because these dudes are fly by night dudes. They get all excited. They find the manosphere. They start a YouTube channel or whatever the fuck you know, some blog or something. They get all excited. It's new. It's fresh meat. And what happens? Two, three years later, they fucking fizzle out and they fade away or they fuck off and do something else. There's a whole graveyard of Manosphere conventions that nobody knows about. I know what all the names are. I know the leaders. I know the guys on a first name basis who ran these events. The Dating Conference, the Morton Hockey Summit, the Real Man Conference, uh, the PUA Summit, Cliff's List. There's half a dozen conventions that have been going in the Manosphere. What happens to them? Where are they? They're all gone. Where's the videos? They're all gone. Whereas the speeches, they're all gone. There's no care. There's no long-term commitment to building events and building content. That part is rare. These guys fizzle out and they fuck off because they don't give a fuck. They're here for the money. They're here for a cash grab. They see popularity. They see potential. They see guys who are excited to not suck with women. I mean, sex sells. If you can sell sex to men, you're going to make money. This is a fucking, this is a story as old as time. But it's a revolving door. It happens for the dudes who learn just enough to get a girlfriend. They fuck off. They get fucked up in a relationship and they come back. The content creators, some of them are the same way. I don't know what percentage, 20, 30 percent or something. They find it. They get excited. They make shit. They fuck off because they make more money doing something else. Look, look at guys. Look at the manosphere in 2021 versus 2015, 2016. There's the names have changed. People have some people have died. You know, that happens. But other people just fucked off and do other shit now. They don't care anymore. Right. So that part just kind of disgusts me because I really care about this community. However much I get hate for it and all this bullshit, you know, it, it's a really important movement. It's, I think, one of the most important movements in the world. It's the only real pushback to feminism for men today and for fathers and for boys and a culture where we're hated for being these things or very natural uh, components of life, you know, in our species and rant. 
Well, let me welcome John Sanmez, Bulldog Mindset, man. It's awesome to have you on here. Yeah. Um, this is kind of the, we'll call it the preamble to this video here. I don't want to call it a response video, but it is kind of a response video, kind of a group. We'll call it a group think right now. Um, you had a video with Donovan. And of course, if Donovan's watching, which I doubt, he's welcome to come on for sure. Um, we had Steve basically give his point of view um, on the situation. And John, I want to welcome you and give everybody a quick, I guess, a quick summary of the video you did yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for having me. You know, you. so yeah, so I, I just really just want to have a chat with Donovan, and uh, he had done a, a little video clip on his channel of talking about the whole like the feuding in the manosphere, and I thought that was good because I, I think that that needs to come out into the air and then and then be be dealt with and, and resolved. So when I had him on, I thought, okay, let's let's talk about this. Let's talk about you know what uh, what's going on, uh, how can we resolve things, how can we work together as as men, and you know what. Um, what, what the future looks like so so yeah so that's what kind of the 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 stream was about was about you know what um are there in, in my whole thing was okay well what does it take for us to resolve these issues right what does it take because the way i look at it is like you know and again i've gotten texts all day from a lot of different people right with you know different messages and stuff i would never share them you know uh, so, so anyone that sent me text you i would never share them with someone else but um <laughs> Uh, but what I'm saying is that, uh, like, if I were to dig into all of that, right, every single person has a reason why they believe they're justified. And 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 when I listen to everyone's arguments, I see why they think that. Now, some of them are weaker than others. I, I'm I'll be honest, right? I you know I'm I'm not an idiot. Uh, but if we were to dig into it and say, okay, we in order to resolve these as these issues as men, what we have to do is we have to go back and figure out who was wrong and who was right it'll never get resolved because we're, we're, that's not the way to go. The only way to go forward if we want to as men and, you know, uh, is to basically just bury the hatchet to basically just say, look, okay, you know, forget what happened in the past, who wants to make a better future and, and who's really committed to this. And, you know, and, and that's, you know, to, in, in my opinion, that's the only way that, that we can do this uh, because you're never going to resolve the issues in the, in the past because people are always going to have arguments and some of them are valid. I mean, a lot of them are valid, right? Everyone, but, but the thing that I learned about life is that everyone is always going to believe that they're justified in their actions. In fact, the very first chapter of Dale Carnegie's book, how to win in friends and influence people. He talks about that. He talks about exactly this. He says, it doesn't matter. He says, never, never condemn anyone. Never uh, basically chastise someone because they will always, no matter what what they do they will always believe that they're justified in their actions and and i'm not saying this from any kind of high horse i do the same thing i always believe i'm justified it's just human nature we believe we're justified in our actions so i don't know so so my whole approach with the with the stream and everything and still my approach is to say look i i don't really care what happened in the past like i understand it i've i've heard every side of every story at this point I'm not going to take any sides. I never will. I'm not going to start feuds and and hate people just because other people hate people. That's not my style. Uh, but the only way forward is for us to just say, okay, forget about what happened in the past. Who wants to work together in the future and and and, and make something happen? And 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 to, in my, in my mind, the the guys that don't want to do that are 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 guys that that don't want to do what's what's the best for you because know, because again people have insulted me i mean i i've been quote canceled in it which is weird in the manosphere at, at by various groups and, and people uh but i don't care i don't care you can cancel me you can call me names it doesn't matter i i'm not going to like to me i look at this as a professional and and, and i'm here to help men and so i don't i it doesn't matter john, what you do i'm not going to get angry about it so i have a few questions for john that are just simple questions i like to ask him tony you cool with that oh yeah go for it john what's your basic opinion on rollo tomasi blocking you on twitter yeah so I'll, i'm happy to address that i don't like it i don't i don't think it was was justified uh but i'll say this since he's blocked me on twitter i've still recommended his work he's he's written some really good books and i would still recommend guys go and, and watch his channel he has a lot of good content 
I don't agree with all of his content. There's a lot of t- stuff that I don't agree with, uh, but there's a lot of guys I don't agree with. But him blocking me on Twitter does not influence my uh, my professional perception of him. So, so to your knowledge, he hasn't extended the same courtesy to you after blocking you, right? I have correct. Him from, yeah, correct. What is your opinion? Yeah. Uh, yesterday after your show, Donovan was talking about. You were basically probing him genuinely, I think, how mm. we could make amends, referring right. to me and him. Uh, right after the show, he got done talking with you on air about that. He went and blocked me on Twitter. Mm. So what is your basic response to Donovan blocking me on Twitter? After Again, an yeah. action that is completely in contradiction to his words. Right. I, I, I would agree with you. That is in contradiction to his words. Mm. Uh, I, I, I don't like that, right? Again, yeah. um, you know, I, I think that doesn't show sincerity. Now, again, mm-hmm. Donovan, if you're watching, I believe when we were talking that you were sincere. So that that action doesn't indicate sincerity. But again, I'm not going to judge. I don't know why you did it, right? Again, I think that Same. the only way to figure that out is for us to have, for Donovan to come and talk to you, Anthony, and for us to ask, why did you do that, right? What is your rationale behind that? Maybe he has a good rationale in his head. Again, it's like, you know, from my perspective, I think that's not a good move. But uh, but again, you know, we, we have to hear from him. My skepticism is in the, the time duration. Him being on a show live to blocking me was a matter of minutes. That is such a tight time frame. I mean, he could just be emotional and blocking me and, and yeah. regret it, you know, 10 minutes later. I don't know. But that's really suspicious to me. But I would ask the question, right? Again, just to be fair, sure. um, I extended you the the link to join the stream sure. when Donovan and I were talking. You didn't jump on there. You know, he yeah. interpreted that. He said, "Well, you know," and, and several people said, "Well, if Anthony really was ser- was uh, sincere, yeah. he would have just jumped on the stream. Why didn't he do that?" So he must be the yeah. one. So he kind of said sure. the same thing that you said about him blocking. So you know, but you're here, so you can answer that. But I sure. let me interject here. I think that was a good decision on Anthony's because what happens is is people can get very. In other words, if you're not primed and ready, I think that you can come off. You, you're not going to say what you need. Sometimes mm-hmm. there's a cooling off period. I think that is really, really necessary where you can talk a little bit more rational. But, John, what I want to go to you with is that mm-hmm. you're Wait, welcome. Uh, John asked me a question. I'd like to answer okay. it. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so the question was about not jumping on the show, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's there's a couple of reasons for that. Tony is kind of alluding to some of them. I'm not one to just pop on random streams. Frankly, I wasn't like ready for a stream. I wasn't set up mm-hmm. to film. I have lights, cameras, and this wasn't like time of day for me. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, not woken up. Uh, on a different day, maybe I would have jumped in, but probably not. And the reason most specifically I chose, I definitively decided not to jump in the stream. I was like, yeah, done. Was the Candace Owens issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he 100%, I will take that to the grave. And I've shown you text messages where I discussed with, with several speakers back in June 2020. When Donovan Sharp dropped out of 22 convention and 21 convention, he blamed Stefan Molyneux and Candace Owens. The Candace Owens part is retarded and didn't make sense. It didn't make sense then. It doesn't make sense now. I thought it was ridiculous. I asked him about it, and he just kind of mumbled something about retweeting. I don't know if it was referring to me retweeting Candace Owens, which I have, Stefan Molyneux retweeting Candace Owens, or someone like Socrates, who we talked about as well. He definitively, though, blamed Candace Owens and Stefan Molyneux, mostly Stefan Molyneux, for dropping out of 21 Convention. Particularly, he was citing some comments that I checked with Molyneux about that didn't happen, uh, where he was criticizing George Floyd, the whole George Floyd uh, situation back in, mm. you know, in 2020. So something Molyneux said pissed Donovan off, but Donovan took it way too far. I told him I didn't want any fucking part of his beef with an alumni speaker, and I didn't care, unless it was really serious. If, right. if Molyneux went on a live stream and started dropping N-bombs about fucking George Floyd, I need to know about it. I need a link. I need a time code. I need to look at it. I need to talk to Molyneux. Because that could blow up not just in my face. That could blow up in everyone's face. Right. All the speakers who have been spoken within the past you know, three years or something. That's a big deal. That never happened. This is fake news. So when he, when specifically, to get back on point, when he dropped out or when he specifically cited or denied the Candace Owens crap, I knew he jumped the shark. I was like, this motherfucker had a half hour co- phone conversation with me, which is in my fucking, you know, phone records with T-Mobile, right? On the phone with this guy. He specifically cited Candace Owens multiple times. I talked about it in writing with speakers, multiple guys that you know from this, from speaking at 21 about Candace Owens, how fucking stupid it was. And I saw him deny that on your show. He lied to your face, John. He lied to all of your subscribers and he lied to all of his own subscribers when he published that video. He just lied to like 300,000 guys or 300 whatever thousand. He fucking lied, bold-faced. 
I knew when he lied about the can of so and thing, he was going to take it to the bank. Like, this guy's nuts. He's totally off unhinged. If he's going to lie about something that came out of his mouth verbatim that I talk to people about, there's no, there's no end to this. He's committed to the lie like an SJW. Double down, triple down, all that crap. So that's when I was like, fuck this, dude. This is like way too far. It's fake news. Okay. F- fair enough. I-, I would say, I mean, there's two things I would, I would say by, about that. One is that uh, I, I believe that if we talk to Donovan about it, again, this is a possible explanation. He might have a different idea or recollection oh, of exactly it, what it was. He definitely will now after this conversation. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. and, and, it, and it could be it could be a misinterpretation. It, it could be. Or, or, you know what I'm saying? Again, I'm not saying it is. I'm saying that's a possibility because when things get heated and, and we, you know, we, you know, one person hears one thing and they, they mm-hmm. think that that means this and interpretation, especially over text and, and things like that. But the second thing I would say is this, is this is a good example of why in order to move forward, we have to really bury the hatchet because think about this situation let's say that let's say that donovan is lying about this again i can't take sides here because i i don't have firsthand knowledge right i can't say oh it's absolutely the the case i'm not going to take sides on it but let's say that he is lying okay what is it going to take for someone who's publicly made a lie to a lot of people to to confess that lie I mean, you know, I, I, the right happen. thing is the right thing is to do it, of course. Yep. But and I'm not saying that he is lying, but I'm saying that let's suppose that he is. It would take a lot to do that. So to ask someone to do that is 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 not is not feasible. And and I'm yep. not just and I'm just using this as a microcosm of the of the bigger problem because how many how many few I don't I can't even I need to draw a map on how many guys are feuding with how many guys over over different uh, things. A lot of the feuds are, are pretty minor. Like uh, so, I think there's different levels to feuds in the manosphere, and some of them are just just shit talking and people make up. Coach Greg Adams and George Bruno had a pretty bad uh, fight <laughs> a long time ago. And as as a as a guy in between the two of them, the one of both of them to speak, I had to email them individually. And I was like, hey, can you both work this out? Like, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a shot. Hop yeah. on the phone, talk it out. If you end up screaming at each other, whatever, you know, it is what it is. But I'd appreciate it if you both gave it a shot. And they did, and they worked it out. I think, uh, you know, Coach even Coach Greg even did a video later kind of talking about George Bruno and vice versa. Yeah. And they, they I think that when they first met at 21, they literally hugged each other. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they were ready to fucking kill each other, basically, yeah. online. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to say this. Hey, Bulldog. Again, yeah. I love the interview, man. You know, you're my dog, man. Love you, man. You're my dog. You know, we, we had a great time at 21. I respect everything you do. It's just as many people are arguing in this thing, because I'm not in part of the manosphere. Why is my name coming? Not, I'm not, it's not your fault, <laughs> but no, I'm just saying. Yeah. No, I get it. Yeah. My, what? Of all people, why is my name coming up? You see what I'm saying? Why Why is my name coming up? Because Donovan's a drama marketer. He's well, a drama marketing that, dude. Right. I'm just saying that. That's. I mean, see, out of respect, what I said before, you might have missed it. I said, look, it's one thing if you say, Steve, you know what? I'm going to Bulldog. And I'm going to address a certain. I'm going to bring your name up. You know? I didn't even get I didn't get privy to it until I watched it. Wait a second. Why is my name in this? I, I don't have no ill will to do. I never say anything bad to Donovan. And, we went, and I always feel... If I'm talking about somebody else, it's none of your damn business who the fuck I'm talking. Not you, bull. I'm saying it's none yeah. of my business who the fuck I'm talking about. But you defending another man, which is like to me some suspect shit. Because why the fuck do you give a fuck what I'm doing? Why why do you care so much what I'm doing? You say you got a brand. That motherfucker ain't got no brand. That motherfucker bears nuts ain't even dropping the game yet. He ain't got no brand. But he want to say me. I'm destroying the brand. I don't even talk about that knucklehead like that to destroy his brand. I, that's that, that's why I was. I'm sorry, but my, my last yeah. question I wanted to ask John real quick. Um, so you you've made it's clear you have a a organized, structured, like intellectual position on this, John. That's obvious to me, and I maintain that you're very genuine, and sincere in these positions. I said that yesterday on the show. I mm-hmm. meant it. I mean it now. And I'll, and you're not the only one. There's a lot of guys like you. Coach Greg is a really good example, who's very distant, third party, neutral party to all this, right? Mm. Which I think is very similar to your position. My question is kind of two part. Are you familiar with Nicholas Nasim Taleb, the author? Yeah, uh, yeah, one of my favorite Flux. authors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 I love him too. Yeah, he has a saying that you're probably familiar with, and that's uh, <laughs> if you don't cry, you see fraud, you don't cry fraud, then you're a fraud. If you don't yes. see fraud, you don't call, you know, call a fraud, you are a fraud. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not throwing that at you specifically. I'm saying what boundaries uh, specifically, and what lines do you draw with dealing with people? If you find it, you know, preponderance of the evidence that they're not dealing with you in good faith, 
I believe to the bone, to the bottom of my soul, that Donovan lied to your face yesterday and all of your fans and subscribers for his own benefit to pretend to be this nice guy. Oh, I'm just a nice guy. Look at Anthony. Oh, man, I'm just a nice guy. Anthony's calling me a scumbag. I'm such a nice guy. I just want peace in the manosphere. Just peace and harmony, bro. Yeah, call me. I don't want to step call on me. squirrels. He's talking shit on everybody, right? He started a fight with me in January. I didn't talk. You know, February 5th, 2019, Richard Cooper attacked me. June 2nd, 2019, Roel Tomasi attacked me. January 24th or some shit, Donovan Sharp attacked me. I didn't say nothing. I was like, you know, fuck this. I don't want to deal with this shit. I'm tired of this fucking drama. Leave me the fuck out of it. Let this video float off into nowhere and who gives a fuck? No. He goes on your show and goes on to a 60-minute fucking tirade. I'm not attacking Anthony, but let me engage in 65 minutes of character assassination where I'm not really attacking him, but I'm kind of attacking him, calling him an untrustworthy piece of shit. That was the snakiest bullshit, just to speak candidly, I've ever I've ever seen on video. See, it's, it was politician-level yeah. shit. Like, I, I, so, so mind. here, yeah, I mean, there's a couple things I would say about that, and then and I'll get to the fraud question, but, but the thing is, you know, the the thing that I think that that's important to understand is different people view things in a different way, right? So again, I can't speak for Donovan because I don't know him, uh, like I'm not him, right? But mm -hmm. and I don't know exactly what he meant, but I I like to give him the benefit of the doubt in saying that he didn't believe that he was attacking you because he wasn't calling you names. Now, my interpretation, okay, and Donovan, if you're watching, this is my interpretation. And I said it during the stream is I and I tried to hint it during the stream. I didn't say it directly, but I'll say it now is I felt like that was an attack on Anthony and it would be interpreted attack. That's why I said, hey, let's ask the audience if they feel like this is an attack. Does, does Anthony feel like this is an attack? Let's have him on because because not because see, again, he may be drawing the line and saying, if you don't call someone a name, you're not attacking them. But. Uh, but I would say if you are implying that someone is a shady character, you're attacking them, right? Now, again, different people are going to have different perspectives on that. And remember, the perspective is always going to be influenced by where where you're sitting. From his perspective, mm -hmm. he might have thought, oh, I'm not attacking Anthony because I'm not calling him names because it's easy to justify your own actions. Again, we're all guilty of that, okay? Uh, I mean, I could call out and I could say, well, Anthony, you said that you weren't going to, you know, but, but in the chat, you were saying nasty things to, to oh, yeah. him. And totally. then afterwards, you posted the, <laughs> a picture. <laughs> I was like, damn it, Anthony, don't do that, man. Well, what did you expect? Donovan Sharp. Donovan yeah, I know, Sharp, I know, I know, I know. I mean, <laughs> hey, why can't, why can't we just, like, laugh at all this shit? You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. I think it's what, a very masculine you know I mean? It's locker room. It's locker room talk. You bust yeah, so ball. why can't we just, like if we're going to rag on each other, can we be men and rag on each other and, and just laugh it off and like, not have like, you know, super big feuds about this. This is like, you know, again, but, but to address your question about the fraud for me, the, the line is, it has to be firsthand, right? Okay. Because, because it's so hard because again, I listen to, you know, how many people text me or called me after this, the stream and they, and, and they, and, and, you know, again, I know some of these people, like, for example, I went down and I spent time, uh, with, with Myron and, and Prince there and those, and those guys are sincere. Okay. Now I know that, that there's, there's, um, some, some, uh, you know, between Steve and, and them and, and, and I understand I've heard both of their positions on it. Okay. And, and both of those positions, if you listen to them, both, both parties are sincere and they make, they make sense. Okay. I'm not the one who's going to judge who's right or wrong, okay? Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to like say, "Oh, I hate Myron." I'm not going to say I hate Steve. I'm not going to take sides on that because the thing is, it's so complicated when people get into feuds. Is that everyone thinks that they're right, and and usually, usually, both parties are wrong in some way. Usually, that's the case, right? And and it's a battle of who's the more wronger, right? You know what I mean? Because when someone does something to you, you do something back to them, and now and now you're you you become guilty as well. And so, so that's why like my answer is just to say fuck all this shit. Like let's laugh it all off. Let's say all right, hey, we're men. We do stupid shit. We fight it out. Whatever. Bury the hatchet for the good of of like what we're trying to do. Like all the guys that actually want to move forward and actually really. The you know, John, right. to, inter to interject, yeah. I think there's an error. I and as as an objectivist, I don't know if you're an objectivist, but I am. I mm -hmm. think there's an error, and there's an error in your thinking, and you're okay. assuming that everyone in the manosphere. Now, as no, this is not a literal statement. I don't mean it literally, but right, you're you seem to be operating on the idea, the assumption that everyone's operating in good faith. When we have hundreds and hundreds of manosphere content creators, right? Statistically, some of them have to be, you know, Bad publicly. Actors bad actors they legitimately right. have malicious intentions they don't give a fuck about the community they don't give a fuck about its history they don't right. give a fuck about its future and they but they will say the opposite 
to make yep. money, to get super chats, to get donations. There is at least, you know, 2%, 5%, 10%, some chunk of the Manosphere that is just legitimate scumbags. Right. Like very fucked up. And that's every industry. It's not just the Manosphere and the community. It's fitness and, industry. It's everything, right? Yeah. Right. And here's so, okay. John, who are those people? Yeah, John, I was just saying something real quick. Yeah. And, and, and you know, we, we talked on the back end. That yeah. my problem wasn't that. My problem is see, I, I I'm used to men handling men stuff to man stuff. I'm not used to men yep. running behind tattling yes. and threatening, saying that if you don't get rid of this guy, I'm out. See, that's some sidebar bitch shit. That's, that's exactly that's exactly what Donovan Sharp did to me with Stefan Molyneux. Oh, Get rid no, of Stefan Molyneux all or not. Me. All right, then we got a lot in common because yeah. that's what Myron did to me. Yep. I, yep. I, I got the proof. Don't worry. I got proof. I mean, I know I got proof, but I'm just and saying. You, that. Yeah. No, I'm just saying real quick that, you see, you, I see what you're saying, Bulldog, but as a man, you don't run to another man and then threaten that man to do something to another man or yeah. you're gonna that that's that's bitch shit but see that's the but that's that's the protection it's again i'm yeah. just saying and, that yeah uh, and, and, and when you called me on the phone yeah. i i agreed with you about that yeah. and i publicly agree with you no that doubt. that is bitch shit and i and i don't condone it right. again i'm not gonna say you know we know who 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 did that it, it, I don't condone that action, but I don't, I don't, it doesn't make me say, oh, I hate oh, this God. person now. You know no, what I'm saying? I, right? that because I make mistakes. I do stupid shit. I'm sure I've done some bitch shit in my life. All right. Uh, you know, but, but to, to address like what you're saying, Anthony, okay. Uh, sometimes I like to play a little dumb. All right. <laughs> like I know that there's bad actors, <laughs> but one thing I've learned in life is that if you give a dog a bad name, you might as well hang the dog. So I try to to assume even when i know someone is a bad actor and in bad faith i try to assume that they're doing it for the good because sometimes that makes them start to do it for the good or, or they're forced into the situation where now they have to be a good actor or or what happens is when you do that if i play dumb and i'm like oh yeah I, i'm just dumb john just accepting of everyone i don't know what's going on okay, and sure. um and i and i and i have a high esteem of them then they publicly out themselves and prove right, that I, you know who I they are. I retract much or most of what I my question earlier because you're addressing it. You're I, <laughs> I understand how you think now about this. I get it. And that's how that's honestly what I had to do. And I've talked about this publicly. You know, I had to vomit in my mouth towards the end, you know, introducing Rolla Tomasi at 21 convention because I understood what a piece of shit he was, but I couldn't prove it. I was like, I'm stuck with this fucking guy. This guy has immense influence over my life, and my company. And if I fuck with this guy too much, he's going to kill me. He's going to kill my life's work. So I had to kind of vomit, swallow my fucking vomit to introduce this guy at my own conference. I hated it, but I sucked it up. And there were people like Pat Stedman who hated Rollo, who knew what a piece of shit he was, in my view, in my perspective. And they were like wondering why I'm still associating with this guy. I was kind of stuck in this fucking loop with this guy who I figured out was a really fucked up manipulator, like fucking weirdo, fucking wacko. So that I, for people who for years were wondering why I associated with Rolo, I didn't always know he was a scumbag, but I did figure it out along the way. And then it was kind of like, oh, fuck, I'm like too deep with this guy. There are bloggers even who've written about this, like secular patriarchy. They were like curious as to why I was so in bed with this guy. And it's like, you just fucking get wrapped up with some people and you can't get out of it. And people don't want to hear that. Like I was talking about earlier on the show before you joined, I think a lot of the Manosphere, these guys have like a very binary black and white and I'm a black and white thinker. Like I'm an objectivist, like all about black and white thinking, but it's over, it's like hyper binary. It's like feminists mm -hmm. are out there and these e thoughts and all these hoes and these soy boys. And in here it's like masculine men and content creators and we're all good. And it's not that simple, right? All right. Some of these feminists are legitimately just brainwashed and some of them will turn, they'll turn tail and they'll go savage against the feminists, right? Janice Fiamengo is a true pristine example of that, you know, she's not a chameleon, none of this MGTOW bullshit. Janice Fiamengo is a fucking savage Canadian professor who hates feminism to the bone. Amazing woman, great woman, like Ayn Rand. Mm -hmm. Some guys in the manosphere are turncoats, they're traitors. There's a percentage that are legitimately fucking traitors and the average guy doesn't know it because that guy, it's called a red pill blind spot, DDJ calls it. They're like, oh, that guy bashes feminism, that guy makes fun of hoes, that guy makes fun of thought culture. He must be a good guy. It's like, no, he might just be, he might just be selling you lip service to fucking get you hyped up and excited because you're so desperate for leaders right now. We're so desperate for voices that push back against this narrative that hates us for being men. 
It's like anybody who says feminism's gay is like a hero now because feminism has taken over the culture and all these, it's all this other bullshit. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, I understand your position better and I've been in that position and it, it sucks. You know, sometimes people wonder why you're doing stuff and you just have to play dumb, be the dumbest guy in the room. Oh, I don't know. Rolo is a great guy. Well, I, want, I mean, yeah. Go I want to go to I want to go to man because he's been very quiet so far. He hasn't had, had a chance to say anything. But I want to go into him because I want to say he's a a newer manosphere consumer. Okay, so I want we had Gonzo's take. I want I want man's take on this real quick, and then I've got a really good question for John Anthony and Steve the Dean. So just want to say, yeah, I just want to say, hey, John. Hey, Anthony, nice to meet you on camera, finally. And uh, Steve, second time to meet you. Good to see you, man. Hope y'all doing well. 100, 100. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, Tony, thank you. Guys, as always, man, love y'all. Uh, anyway, I just want – I keep it short. I'm not a man of many words, but uh, not everything needs a reaction across the board. And uh, I think, to be honest, the bottom line is truth talks and bullshit walks. And so whatever the truth is, whatever, wherever the frauds are, they're going to get exposed. They're going to bounce off. Let them shoot their arrows. Let them do what they're going to do. Keep pushing the message. Keep doing what you got to do one day at a time. And uh, yeah. and and nothing, not everything needs a reaction. That's it. <laughs> Much great, love to y'all. Great, great comment. I want to address John, Anthony, and, and Steve. When does... When does a content creator in the manosphere water down his content? And John specifically, John, you're a wealthy guy. You do well for yourself. One thing I, I, I've, I've, I, and I've met you in person, and I, I, I really believe you are sincere, and you are truly out there trying to help guys with lifestyle. When I say lifestyle, fitness, their business, and also whether it be game or pickup, whatever you want to call it being able to relate to women you're you're financially set when does the when does the message become watered down for revenue for financial gain okay so let's let's start with you yeah i mean that's a good question so so in in my <laughs> i've already been canceled before right uh, like i like f from my perspective uh, i i guess my perspective a little bit different is because you know yes yes i'm running a business here but I don't, I don't need to run a business. I, I, I have income that's coming in, right? Passive income. So for me, I just say what I think. Now, with that said, right, I, I also am careful to not like, I don't, there, I've never found any benefit in my life in hating people. I've never found any benefit in making enemies, right? So I would rather work together with people, even, even people who are, who maybe, uh, don't have the best intentions uh, and, and give them the best intentions. And so I'm not going to water down my content at all uh, because, you know, like, like you're, like you're hearing here is because my, my motive is primarily that I want to help guys. That's why I'm doing this. Otherwise I could be doing a lot of other things. And, and like I said, I don't, I don't but really need John, to, you don't yeah. have to do this. Let's get that on the table. Correct? Right. Right. You, you do not have to do this. Right. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a passion to you. I'm not going to take away that. I think that everybody has the right to earn money. Right. For what sure. I'm putting to you is you don't have to do this. Financially, you don't need to do this. Correct? R correct. Right. Yeah. 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 So so that, I think that's a, that's a different angle you're coming at. Yeah. And, and I think that that has to be so. You know, to be fully full disclosure, in which I I show my finances every every month uh, and what I make, I do make a lot of money from Bulldog Mindset, but like I said, I don't need the money in order to to live. Uh, it's 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 extra. Uh, so, but I think that that is something to take into account. Is that some content creators, right? You know, and and I think that anyone who's making their living from it is going to be biased. So 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 for example, right? I think a good example of this is and again, I'm not accusing anyone of lying, but w if we go back to the whole uh Donovan thing that I was talking to Anthony about, it's like, well, let's suppose that that Donovan is it was lying about the the thing again. I'm not taking sides on this, but I'm saying as a let's suppose that he is is he, you know, if if his business is his audience's faith in him it's very costly for him to come out and say that he was lying even if he would like mm -hmm. to do it right so 
so that's a factor. So again, do there's the right thing, right? If if he's lying, is it the right thing for him to come out and say that he's lying? Of course it is. But I have a little bit of empathy to say that I can understand why he wouldn't if he was lying because it would cost financially and he's running a business. And so uh, me as, as a man would say, okay, well, let's allow this person to save face. Let's just move forward. Right. And that's why I think it's so important that we don't try and get to the bottom of all of these things because a bunch of people will probably be caught in lies and, 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 and behaviors that would hurt them financially. Right. If we try to, and we see what happens when people try to expose that. Right. I mean, there's, there's certain characters that, that, uh, that, that we we're talking about the other day who, who are just hell bent on just destroying people and nothing else. They're not even trying to help guys. They're just trying to destroy people and they start uh, doxing people and all this stuff. And then it becomes a real bloody mess and that's, and that's no good. So, so I think there, it is important to consider the financial, uh, you know, impact on that. And that's why, you know, we have to be smart enough to be, to be guys to say, okay, well, let's let some people save face because, it, it'll cost them a lot of money and and, and there are their other audience or they're afraid so let's let them save face and let's move forward that that's why I, I i keep on emphasizing that position i don't want to look at people's past sins and things like that because you're never going to get i mean it's hard enough to get a man to admit when he's wrong it's 10 times as hard to get a man to admit he's wrong when it's going to cost him money so <laughs> you, you know what i'm saying yeah. so so that's why i think pursuing that avenue doesn't make any sense but that's that's my piece on it okay anthony I'm largely in the opposite camp of John on this issue. Uh, for example, like I don't, I have no interest in uniting with frauds. So people have committed real fraud in the community. People have done real harm. People have done real doxing, like Raul Tomasi. Uh, I have no empathy for them. I don't care. And another thing too, by the way. So John, I think, is being serious and sincere on him not needing the money for his work with Bulldog Mindset. Raul Tomasi rides on the coattails of that position by saying. A thousand times a year, a thousand times a day. I'm not in it for the money. I'm not in it for the money. I'm not in it for the money. I challenge Roel Tomasi to release his tax returns from any year, 17, 18, 19, 20, whatever. I'll release mine. Most of his money by far comes from the rational mail. It's been that way since about 2015, 2016. He lies consistently to his audience on his blog and on his uh, YouTube channels and stuff about this issue. He says it to get the moral high ground. John is saying it and it's legitimate. And it does give him kind of a, a bump in that regard for credibility. Rollo does it to leech. Rollo does it to lie and does it to manipulate. It's fraud. It's absolute fraud. And he does it knowingly and willingly because people, most of culture is based on altruistic morality. So doing things not for the money, not for your self interest. Rollo plays on that. 48 Laws of Power shit, a book he's obsessed with. This is one of the primary ways that Rollo manipulates his audience and his guys have no idea. A lot of them are codependent. They belong in therapy, not, re not coaching calls, not the manosphere. They really belong in therapy, like talk therapy, seriously. He preys on these codependent dudes that get busted up by BPD women and they're all fucked up and he saves them into a new fucking hellscape of his own roller pill making. And he and one of the ways he does it is by telling them, I'm not in there for the money. I'm not in there for the money. I'm better than those guys who were in it for the money. But meanwhile, like 80% of his income is fucking the rational male. Uh, as far as the rest of it, you know, I'm not exactly in the same camp as John on this stuff. Uh, I don't know, because what was the original question exactly? I don't want to go too far off tangent with it, Tony. What it was is that the content being watered down yeah. basically in search of revenue. In other yeah, words, I have, well, I, have no, I have no tolerance for watering it down, zero. Like yeah. if some Donovan should own up to his mistakes and lose a lot of money for it. For example, Donovan Sharp got secretly married to his girlfriend back in 2019. Oh. A lot of people don't like that, don't want to hear that, but that's what happened. He even had a one-year anniversary in Florida back last year in 2020. But people don't know about this. Donovan, but then Donovan goes anti-marriage on his channel all day long, right? Oh, if his oh. audience knew that, if his audience knew that, he'd lose a lot of money. So he lies about it consistently over and over and over again, just like Rolo. These are the ways these guys get defrauded in ways they don't realize. You have a guy go on YouTube, bitch about marriage, bitch about this and that. And then what does he do? He go gets private married behind the scenes. He has a wedding and a honeymoon to Hawaii or some shit. That's why he didn't speak at Poland 21 convention, but he spoke later in the year in Orlando. This is one of the ways Donovan lies to his own audience to make more money. That's what Rolo does all the time, too. I have zero tolerance for it. But Anthony, let me fuck. real quick. Just Go real ahead. I'm going to put a link in the chat. So if there's somebody that is worthy of coming on and worthy, I would say, if Donovan happens to be watching this, I'll go he's, ahead. He is welcome to come on. But I'm going to put this link in the chat. Um, if there's anybody else that I see is worthy, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to judge who's worthy. 
tonight. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, Tony. If the average Manosphereian Manosphere guy knew the level of fraud, deception, and bullshit that a lot of content creators, not a lot, mm -hmm. a huge amount, but like 20, 30 percent are engaged in, mm -hmm. their heads their heads would explode. They would have a permanently damaged trust relationship with the Manosphere itself. They would unsubscribe from half the channels. They never would watch any of it again. They would be so angry and so fucking frustrated and so uh, betrayed. That's the level of deception that goes on in the Manosphere. That's why uh, I don't think John is fully aware of this. I think John is aware of some of it, and John's head and his heart is in the right place. But there's a really serious level of fraud that goes on in the Manosphere every day, every fucking day, for not just years, but decades. And it goes on and on and on again. Because no one, in my opinion, people don't want to get their hands dirty. They see drama and they're like, ah, oh, let me get away from it. Fuck it, let me stay away from that. And that's why it continues, just like in politics. No one wants to get their hands dirty. No one wants to get attacked. No one wants to get called a racist or a sexist or a misogynist or whatever. No one wants, everyone's like, oh, violence is bad. Violence is bad. The founding fathers weren't a fan of that. What did they say? They went to war. They went to war to found, to found and fight for their country. They got their fucking hands dirty. That's what this community needs. I'm not advocating for violence in the ministry of Jesus Christ, but there, there's a level of savagery. There's a level. Of, that's what that's what the MGTOW dictionary boxing guys. Rings. Oh, go ahead, dude. People yeah, are saying definitely. Donovan will beat my ass. Are you kidding me? Oh, give him my address. Show up in my house. Are you fucking kidding me? That fat fuck. That goofy like, goofball. You I'm talking shit, sanctioned man. boxing rings. Now there, <laughs> whatever, man. There's a question in the chat, and I don't know if this is the real Dippin. John, you're probably familiar with Dippin from MGTOW dictionary. I don't watch it that much, but I don't know if this is the real Dippin. If it is, he's welcome to come on. Um, is that oh, MGTOW Dictionary? That's his name? Well, no, he's one of the guys that comes on Dippin. Um, I do recognize him. I, I recognize the name, but if that's him, you're welcome to click that link and come on. Um, also, let me see some new comments here real quick. I don't think this is this is not the real MGTOW. If I can end my, my rant on this... Uh, I, I have zero. To, I'm an absolute binary on this, like zero tolerance for diluting your message. I have put my business on the line a thousand times going to war, for example, to kick roll out of my company. That cost me an ungodly amount of money. It cost me a shit ton of money. And if I had to put my fucking balls and my money where my mouth is and it fucking hurt. And you know what? I won. I fought and I survived. And here I am bigger and stronger than I've ever been. Uh, you know, that's how that's what the man really needs. You have to have that kind of attitude, I think. I think for it to survive and to thrive long term and to grow and to unite, people have to get fucking attacked and get stabbed in the back and shit and get bullets and arrows. It is what it is. Now, I'm, I want to address something you said. You said that and I'm you know, this is a kind of a <clears throat> I don't want to say a, an epiphany, epiphany for me, but you said Donovan Sharp is married. Yeah, now, absolutely. Let, let me, let, I, I want to. The reason I want to address this is because, again, he he goes against marriage. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to me, if that's the case, and again, that to me is if that's the reality. I yep. don't. I'm not saying it's true. I, I don't, don't know if he's legally or privately married. I have a chain of emails where he's bugging me about private marriage. I even went on a show and talked about private marriage and he got pestering about it, pestering about it, pestering me about it for weeks and months before he got married. Legal, uh, I think private marriage. He might be legally married now. I don't know. I think his wife runs his ass. He jokes on his Patreon about his wife or girlfriend or whatever she has blue balling him. I mean, this is all on his Patreon. It's all fucked up shit. But no, as far as I know, he's uh, secretly married to this chick. They had a honeymoon and a wedding back in <laughs> summer 2019. They had a first year anniversary in Florida in 2020 in the summer. He came, I think, to Orlando for it, Disney World and shit. You can follow a lot of this on his Facebook. This is how big of a fucking fraud this guy is. This oh. is how big a lot of these guys are. Rolo Tomasi is a total goofball in real life. This guy has zero social skills. He hasn't had a same LA in 20, 30 years. He couldn't fuck his way out of a paper bag at a fucking bar. Like, it's, he's so fucking, when people meet him and they're just blown away what a fucking loser he is. That's how bad it is in real life. It's that bad. My sister met him and called him an alien. She's like, that dude, that dude is like an alien. <laughs> he's that fucking awkward, but he's a good keyboard jockey and he's good at attacking feminism and shit. So guys like him, they don't know any better. Half these guys have zero social skills. The MGTOW dictionary guys, I think some of them are probably spurred. That's why they won't drop it. They just keep going after these guys, right? Like fucking like little machines, like little chihuahuas or something. <laughs> They're probably spurs. Like half these guys, man. Well, I, I, I want Steve to address this about watering down your message for revenue. So uh, yeah, yeah, I got I to gotta say this real quick and then I go. Um, well, here's the thing that my, okay, I've seen it all. I mean, I've been... I've been in this thing for 30, over 30 years, seeing the, from Ross Jeffries 
Going from Doc Love to Ross Jeffries. Ross Jeffries to W. Dating. W. Dating to uh, Mystery and Style. I I've seen all this. I've seen it all. I've seen the squeeze pages. I've seen all the ways that they uh, hook these guys in on words and phrases and catchphrases. And my biggest problem is they're just doing a they doing damage to these young boys. They don't understand. They don't understand what they're doing to young men today by trying to trying to create these cults of hate it's all problematic how many ways can you bitch about a motherfucking woman how many ways can you complain how many ways can you man? but with that's what they're doing they're hooking these boys in that way and he's and they're just setting them up for a downfall when they get older man so i mean i don't agree with it but i'm not here to tell them what to do with their money but i, I but you notice i don't associate with that kind of shit I only roll with real motherfuckers. That's all I do, brother. That's all I do. I wanted to comment too uh, on this thing. One more thing, Tony. Um, Go ahead. You know, I almost lost my. I, I mentioned to John, I was, you know, but really to everybody. I almost. I spent a huge amount of money kicking Rolo Tomasi out of my company. He went after the attendees. He was filing, you know, getting these guys to file chargebacks under fraudulent pretenses, material deception, all kinds of shit. It's wire fraud, is what it is. It's criminal. But, you know, in 2020, forget the Rolo crap. I went to bat and I went to war for the Manosphere for Make Women Great Again. I could have lost my business. Two of our speakers, too, had fucking things filed against it. Well, they, had, they almost lost their licenses, basically. Two of them. I'm not going to name names. I don't want to get them any more trouble. They have state licenses with the governments in their state for professional shit. They almost lost their licenses. They're on the verge of losing their licensing to do their own jobs that have very little or nothing to do with the Manosphere. So that almost happened to them. But those are the guys I roll with. Me, I could have my bank accounts canceled. I could have lost my YouTube channel. I could have lost my websites. I could have lost everything with Make Women Great Again. But I believe in Make Women Great Again because I believe in the manosphere. And that, to me, is a part of it. That's a huge part of it. This is what men feel. Like, women today are fucked up. Women kind of suck. We need to do something. They were, our grandmas were better because women are a bunch of hoes that sell pictures of their butthole for $5 a month. Something's wrong. There's something really, really wrong with the state of dating and sexual marketplace today. And Make Women Great Again seems to fit that really, really well. So I put my money where my mouth is. I could have lost everything with Make Women Great Again. I was getting death threats. My sister was getting fucking threats at her job and shit. She works at a major theme park in Orlando. People, her friends were fucking, they knew me from fucking social circles and shit. There was all kinds of hell for my family and my personal life from that crap. And my speakers, my friends. With real, not potential shit, not anonymous shit, actual fucking complaints filed with the state governments to lose, to remove their fucking licenses and ruin their careers and ruin their lives. These are my friends that I'm responsible for in a way for promoting Make Women Great Again. So in terms of like how much you're going to water down your message, zero. And I'm not going to lie to you. Some of the speakers, there was a big conversation with Make Women Great Again hit. If I went too far, if I jumped the shark and I stood fucking strong, zero fucking inches, zero against everyone. People were like, you need to calm down. You need to back down the stuff, tone down the marketing, change this, change that. No, fucking zero. And in the end, Everyone's like, Anthony, you made the right call. You stuck by your fucking guns when the fucking heat was on you a thousand percent. That's how I fucking roll. And if I lose my fucking ass doing it, I'm going to fuck. I believe in this shit. I believe I care about it more than money. I'm going to die someday. What am I going to go to the grave with the money for? I don't give a fuck. Money is useful. It's a tool. It's important. But the mission and the ideas and the community and all the shit that we're doing is way more important. The dollar could collapse 18 months from now for all we fucking know. We're all worth nothing. Who cares? Like, this stuff is important to me. This is what matters. I'm going to die someday. I could get hit by a bus tomorrow. The Manosphere is, you know, a big part of my life. It's the main It's the main thing that I focus on, my mission, uh, along with, you know, 10 of the things involved with it, but in rant. So I have a question, and this is for everybody, but um, I think Anthony's going to have great perspective on this too because I, I, I think uh, it, what I see is a duality, right? So I see, like, you know, we have situ... Or maybe not a duality. It's, it's a... You have... <laughs> A case by case basis, where you look at things like you've got a the situation with I think you said Coach Greg and George Bruno, and you're talking about uniting them at least for this yeah. event, yeah. And then and then you have situations with Rolo, you know, where it's like we gotta fumigate, we gotta yeah. get this guy out, exterminate you know? them, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the so, final solution. <laughs> Yeah. Oh God. Uh, watch him take that out of context. But yeah, the. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I guess my my question is so you know obviously when you have something like that where it's very aggressive and there's a lot of you know there's a lot of fire being thrown around, it's really obvious. I guess you got to do something like that. But 
you know, where where does the line draw between? Because you know, I agree, we're not going to all kumbaya. You know, there's no way everybody's going to be kumbayaing at the end of this. But I think what is the line between uniting people and uh, I, I suppose ostracizing them, for lack of a better term? I exiled Rolo. I mean, straight up. I mean, that's not a joke. Like that was done in 2019. That's history at this point. Yeah. Not everyone's going to respect that, but. Uh, I'll let John go. My video froze. Yeah, he froze up. Go ahead, John. Well, my, my viewpoint in it, well, I'm a humanist, right? I, I believe that no person is irredeemable. But my whole idea is like, it, it's sort of, okay, the thing that I really dislike about leftist feminist culture is cancel culture, right? And the problem with cancel culture is that everyone thinks that they're right when they're canceling. Like there's this, there's, you know, it's the majority rules. You, you, you said the wrong thing. You thought the wrong thing, you know, wrong think. And so, so to me, like, I I don't, I don't think that we should ostracize people out of the community. Instead, we should just let them uh, show for themselves, right? Because people aren't stupid, right? If, if we have uh, people speaking about what they actually think about and talking about their philosophies, and those philosophies are weak, if, they, if their guidance is not correct, then they will be sniffed out and people won't follow or listen to them. They, they will they will uh, doom themselves. We don't need to actually cut them out. And, and also, you know, I think about it, you know, not not every person see it's easy to paint people black and white and to say you know that this person's bad this person's good and uh you know people are mixed you know some people have have good intentions and they do bad things some people have bad intentions you know uh you know no person is wholly bad right uh so so and sometimes you have a great influence on those people i was just speaking to a content creator today on the phone who's made a lot of nasty videos about other content creators and i was talking to him today and i was like i was like look you know this isn't a good strategy for you you know this isn't this isn't smart like ostracizing yourself from the community i was like maybe maybe turn around maybe like do something different you know i mean and a lot of people don't want to talk to this guy right because because he's burned a lot of people and and said a lot of nasty stuff but uh but i was you know giving some some advice to him and he he took it he said, "Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Like, I, I'm tired of copyright strikes, and I'm, and uh, and and maybe I should start making friends with other people in the community, and and doing this. So, you know, it, again, it's not everyone. It's not everyone, but but there is, you know, by having a little bit of faith in people, sometimes you can bring out the best in them, and that's the thing that I try to do. I mean, heck, I have a guy that I'm coaching right now. Um, I'm not going to say any names, but a, a 20 year old, one year old kid. Okay. Who, who I met on one of the, the nasty streams that happened on Saturday nights. Okay. And he was completely bashing me. And, and, and I said, Hey, I'll help you, man. Like, honestly, like I really will help you. And he said, ah, yeah, whatever. Right. He, he emailed me. I jumped on zoom call. I've been coaching him. I charge $1,500 an hour for my coaching. I've been giving him coaching for free. He was suicidal. He's completely turned his life around. He's doing good now. He's like, you know what I mean? But he was one of those people who you would have said is a completely toxic person. We should exterminate this guy. We should, he's, he's just worthless to society because he's, he was just bashing people and, 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 and trying to stir up controversy and and cause harm to people but the reason why he was doing it was because he was in pain and he was hurting and yeah. by having one person in this world care about him it completely changed his life around you know what i mean and again so that's the perspective that i have is that you know, again maybe some people will turn out that they're they're irredeemable in the sense because they will reject the helping hand and 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 there's nothing but uh but but i'm never going to just like spurn someone and say that they're irredeemable no no matter what and, and again you know what i mean sometimes there's going to be a cost to that but i think those people always come out and it it always becomes obvious when when someone is a bad actor and and, and people will will see that but uh but yeah i don't know I, that that's just my perspective on it but Okay. I agree with some of that. I mean, let, I let, think let, Rolo has made a lot of... Me, if that's the real dipping from MGTOW Dictionary and you want to come on, come on and 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 just hit that, hit that stream button that I just put in there, the stream link, and you are welcome to come on. If that's the real dipping, I don't think it is. But if, if that's the real dipping, 
I know who you are. So um, I, I'll bring you on the stream. So go ahead, Anthony. Yeah, so I agree with some of what John's saying. Uh, and that's and so uh, to put some context to what I said earlier about exiling Rolo, Rolo is the only guy I've ever exiled from the Manosphere. Uh, seriously, that's literally ever. I haven't and I will not exile Donovan Sharp, not Richard Cooper, not MLD, not Ryan Stone. None of these guys that attack me and fight with me and I fight with them. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. They're not, uh, I have obviously very serious disagreements with them in different ways. And that, that varies by degree, depending on the person. Donovan's more recent, but even that is pretty, pretty small potatoes compared to the stuff with Rolo, for example. And even what Rich Cooper got dragged into, I don't think it was by his own, I don't think, you know, Cooper's some, uh, some schemer, some Machiavellian schemer like Rolo is. So I think the reason I exited Rolo is because he, what he committed was treason. And that's what I said verbatim. This guy really doxed over 50 guys. He tried to cover it up for over eight months. And that's really serious. That's not stealing money from another content creator. That's not lying about this. That's not being an asshole. That's not being calling someone names. That's doxing. Those are over 50 attendees and volunteers who were doctors, lawyers, attorneys, active military, retired law enforcement, blue collar workers, regular fucking guys, salt of the earth guys who showed up at our 21 convention to meet our speakers. That dude doxed. I will never forgive that. That's irredeemable. He could try to redeem himself someday. He could try to own up to it, take responsibility for his actions. He would take a massive financial hit for owning up to doxing over 50 guys. So he'll never do it. It's an economic cost in his head. I think the reason for that is that Rolo is at such an age, he's over 50 years old, his personality is so cemented to being this scumbag, unethical piece of shit, Machiavellian 48 laws of power motherfucker, he will never, ever, ever change who he is. He's irredeemable by his own choice. He chose to be that way. He chose to be that way in his late 20s. He chose to be that way in his 30s, in his 40s, now in his 50s. Now he's like this midlife crisis kind of rocker punk phase. It's really weird. But yeah, there's no, I don't see how he can redeem himself. To do that, he would have to completely change who he is, and he's never going to do that. And there's nothing comparable to this. Donovan Sharp has done nothing comparable to that. Richard Cooper has done nothing comparable to that. Ryan Stone has done nothing comparable to that. MLD, who I don't like at all, has done nothing comparable to that. None of these guys have. I don't know anyone in over 25 years' history who has done what Rolo has. So I think there is a line you can cross, and that's it. That's just shy of like a mass shooting or bombing. Doxing over 50 guys in today's culture, 2018, that's not that long ago. That's cancel culture. That's 90% of what we have now. Those guys could have lost their jobs. They could have ended up, Nelly Bowles could have walked up to that fucking cigar bar party with a body cam or a photographer. And all those fucking guys who paid us and trust us to attend the convention and hang out with us, they paid us to you know have basic respect for their privacy and not dox them to the New York Times. Their faces could have ended up on the front page of the New York Times, male supremacist Nazi who hates women. They could have ruined their lives, marriages, families, businesses, jobs, careers, everything could have gone on the fucking drain. So Rollo could get his fix to be the next Jordan Peterson. That's what that guy was after. He was willing to burn over 50 men alive in public. I have zero fucking fucks to give about that shit. I will never forgive that. No one should forgive that. If Coach Greg Adams or Terrence Pop or George Bruno tomorrow doxed 50 guys and their audience found out, they would be fucking livid. They would unsubscribe and never hear the fucking end of it. That is the biggest betrayal you could do. That is, and there's probably other ways to do it, but that's like, I don't know anyone else in that league. And that, that's the guy who walks around LARPing as the, the self-declared godfather or the manosphere and the godfather or the red pill. This is a guy who pretends to want to help men, and then he doxes them. So I don't want to get too much on Rolo, but he's obviously a fucking piece of shit in my mind. I, I was the there. Reality. I was there. And then he tried to blame it on your brother in Ivan Throne. On video, he's done this. You can go look at the Rule Zero crap. He tried blaming it, I blame was, shifting it on I was there, George Bruno I was Ivan. there at the cigar bar that night. I was there in your hotel room also that night. Yep. And I was an attendee. I was not on staff. Yep. So I witnessed this firsthand. So I, I can tell you from my point of view as an attendee, and looking at what was going on, I have to um, co-sign with Anthony. I have to. I want to. I'm going to tap tap on this too. Is that you know George Bruno reached out to your brother, reached out to Richard Cooper, probably a year ago at this point, and just tried to have a a, a debate, not a debate, like a meaningful conversation with them because they were f friends before. I I never knew either one of them. I found George Bruno through through uh, Richard Cooper. And I found Tony Bruno through George Bruno. So I'm thankful to Richard Cooper in some ways for that, uh, specifically and genuinely. 
and I don't like have this hatred of Rich Cooper or any of these guys. It's Rolo's the guy who went way above and beyond to like a sociopathic level to burn guys. I have no respect for that. I'll never forgive it. And so what I'm saying is if Rich Cooper like made amends with George and he was like, hey, Anthony, I fucked up, you know, Rolo kind of sucked me into some shit and I want to, you know, make amends. I'd be like, fine, dude, I don't I don't have any hatred towards these guys. A lot of these guys, I don't care that much. They're just dudes. I have disagreements and I, I kind of have some pretty sharp criticisms of some of them. Uh, but in a lot of ways, it's still redeemable. Like a, the vast majority of them are still redeemable if they were like, you know, there's something wrong here. I fucked up and I'm going to own it. And you fucked up too and you pissed me off, Anthony. I'd be like, all right, you know, whatever. I probably have fucked up. I'm, I'm not perfect, man. I've fucked up plenty of times in my life. I married a fucking prostitute in Vegas. Jesus Christ. I mean, people make mistakes, man. <laughs> but when you make mistakes on purpose that, that put other people's lives at risk and futures, uh-uh. Nope, you're fucked. Get out of my life. You're doomed. Dead. I mean, I understand that perspective. I mean, g g granted that, like, I, I can totally understand that, you know, that you would not want to have anything to do with a Rolo based on that. Uh, I, I think the, the issue is that, that it's not, um, it, it's not something that you can absolutely prove without a shout that. Again, I'm not saying that you're not telling the truth. I'm just saying that that makes it difficult to, uh, I think if if it was very clear, and it, it was absolutely provable, it is. It is. is it though? Is it, it is. absolutely provable? There are text messages from this actually when this actually happened. His text messages yeah. to Nelly. I saw him send the text to Nelly walking down the street on fucking uh, Church Street or whatever it is downtown Orlando. We have a text message from Nelly. We have her in writing claiming this. You know, she's fake news, New York Times, whatever. Mm. She was not in fake news node no mode that night. She put her reputation, and she could get sued for that. If she's accusing Rolo of doing this shit, and the text messages she's showing from him are not real, she could get sued for that. You know, Nicholas Sandman sued successfully CNN and whoever else for hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. They had some private settlement. You can't do that. If they're going to lie and manipulate, they're going to do it through spinning and distortion, not making up text messages. Rolo can drop at any point. Rolo Tomasi can drop his phone records from October 2018. That fucking month, October 2018, his phone records. If he drops those, he'll prove his innocence all day long. He won't do it. He never will. Richard Cooper asked, you know, Rolo Tomasi on Rule Zero way back in 2019. He was like, Rolo was on the show, and Cooper's like, hey, you know, so what if Rolo did it? And Rolo just sits there, and you can go look at the video. Rolo's looking at him like, ugh. Cooper's like, so what if he did it? Actually, that's the whole fucking point. Did he do it or did he not do it? He fucking did it. And we have documentation. We have, we have a 15-page fucking document on this that we put out. Uh, my attorney contacted Rolo, and it's all over his blog and shit. I mean, this is serious shit. There still might be some repercussions for this for Rolo. This is not funny. Like, people could have fucking got really hurt from this stuff. He could have caused catastrophic damage to my business. If 50 dudes from 21 Convention showed up on the front page of New York Times, their fucking yeah. faces... That yeah. would destroy my fucking business forever. Who the fuck's going to come to 21 convention if they're getting doxxed? We live in 2021. That's that's a, getting doxxed is like next step to losing your bank account at this point. Uh, if you're if you're going to Manosphere conventions or whatever, right? I mean, the fucking president of the United States has got or the former president just got his bank accounts canceled. Like we're living in wild times, man. When I grew up in the 90s, people were losing their bank accounts, right? You could do pretty much anything short of illegal activity and you'd have a bank account. Now, no bank account for you. Oh, are you going to found Gab.com and your Torba? No Visa credit cards for you. No Visa debit cards for you. You go to the Gulag, sir. Like, we live in wild fucking times, man. You can't be doing this shit. And, you know, whatever all his motivations and thinking, and I have my own opinions on this, like, this was not just dumb. It was reckless to the point of, like, uh, oh, if these people die, who cares? <laughs> like, nope. Get away from me. Toxic. It's toxic for a guy to pretend to want to help men, to throw them under the bus like that. That is just nuts, man. And he surrounds himself with certain kind of people, and you know it fucking it uh, it rubs off from there, so to speak. I want to address. There's three guys waiting in the uh, in the backstage, and I put the link in the chat for anybody. I don't want to you guys to think that I'm ignoring you. Um, I know Brandon's back there. I see you back there, buddy. Um, you know, I'd love to have you come back on Saturday night. I just, um, I just want somebody that's relevant. I know there is one from, oh, somebody was talking about MGTOW dictionary and we're really not going there. Um, I, I do appreciate you coming on the stream. Was that Emmanuel that wanted to say something about MGTOW dictionary? If I'm correct, just nod your head. I see you back there. I guess not. 
There's a, there's a question in the chat about MGTOW Dictionary and me. Um, they're asking me if he's Machiavellian. I don't know. The first, MGTOW Dictionary emailed me today. This is the first time I ever talked to this guy. I was accused yesterday of being in bed with this guy or some shit yeah. on the stream. I don't fucking... I've shared their... I've retweeted or tweeted some of their videos. Like, that's my relationship with MGTOW Dictionary. I don't know if they're Machiavellian. I don't know... I have ideas about what they're doing. Obviously, I've talked about those in this show. But I don't fucking know these people. Maybe they're fucked up and pieces of shit and they're evil. Who knows? I don't know. Well, I'm a, Emmanuel, nod your head, buddy. You wanted to talk about MGTOW Dictionary? If I'm correct, I can see you backstage. Well, I don't see him now. So now I'm lying. What about what, what the fuck? I, I I don't know if this is if this, I don't think this is dipping from MGTOW Dictionary. I truly don't. I've I've uh, if if you are click that click that link and come on. That's what that's what I got to say to you. So if not, I'm going to time your ass out. That's all, real quick. So if you want to come on, click the link and uh, come on. But if that is the real Dippin, which I don't think it is, I know that's not the real MGTOW Dictionary in there. And if uh, MGTOW Dictionary was in the chat, I'd bring him on right now in a heartbeat. So um, so let, let me ask you guys a question. We, we, we've been airing this out now for, for really an hour and 40 minutes. What can we do? In other words, I'm I'm a, I'm on the big persuasion of I'm okay to disagree with somebody and and just fucking leave it at that. I mean, it's plain and simple. Do you guys? I know John, you 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 really do. You get around the manosphere, and I'm okay with that. Uh -huh. The reason I'm okay with that because I've met you in person. Uh -huh. and I find you very genuine, like super genuine. I, I, I had a preconception of you. I think I told you this before, and I wasn't quite – you don't know a man until you meet him in person. Sure. And to me, that's really, really important. So – and any guys watching this, come to the 21 convention. When the tickets come out, get your, get your tickets. You will not – you will enjoy it. It will be the time of your life for four days. Trust me on that. And I am promoting 21 convention. But so somebody like John – you do, you do, you do say that, okay, you do all sorts of content with every different guy in the manosphere under the umbrella of the manosphere. So what is your, what is your, I guess your solution for, I don't even, I don't want to say the word uniting right now, because yeah. that's it's like a trigger, trigger word. But so what's your solution? Well, this is it. It's it's not uniting even, right? What it is because we can still we can still have people that don't like each other that are 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 coming together even to debate. Right? That's great for the manosphere for people who don't like each other to debate. Mm -hmm. What what sucks is closing dialogue. This is what the feminists do, this is what the left and the liberals do is they close dialogue, right? So I, so this is my challenge, my invitation to, to everyone here, because, and we see it even now, right? How many invitations have we extended to people on this, on this stream? Cause they come on and jump on and they haven't jumped on. Right. And it's like, so, so, and again, I'm not trying to, I understand what you said about yesterday, Anthony. So, you know, you, you, you explain your, your position, but, um, but, but my solution is to say, okay, let's just have more dialogues with people. If you disagree with someone, uh, and, and maybe in you know a good rule that I follow again, not everyone has to follow this rule, but I think it's just a great a great rule is just is to not talk about someone unless they're present. That's just what I learned as a as as a kid. That's I feel like that it's easier to not talk about someone when they're uh, when they're not present online because there's less implications, right? You, you can make a video about someone, you can say something. So. When someone doesn't have a, uh, the opportunity to defend themselves, that's where we get most of the mudslinging happening. Because then, and then people are confused. You know, we we have audiences that are split. People like go to this schism or this schism. They hate this. They they don't know. You know, I can make a video smearing any person I want in the manosphere, and 
and no one can know whether or not what I'm saying is is true. Maybe there's some partial truths in there. Maybe there's some stuff I made up. Maybe there's some way that I, I've spun it again. I'm not accusing anyone of anything. I'm just saying that that's why it's so important to have dialogue and have discussions. And and when we talk about someone, to have them have the chance to to talk back, right? Um, so so that's what I think the solution is. Is just to is to say, okay, it doesn't matter. We don't all have to get along. We don't all have to be friends. We don't all have to agree. We have a lot of different viewpoints. That's all fine. But let's not ostracize people. Let's let's have different viewpoints on our channels. Let's discuss those things. Even if we're going to debate those things, that's fine. That's how things move forward and how we we, we discover new and better ideas. And, and part of the reason actually why I like 21 Convention, right, was because when I was there, I mean, heck, I met like Coach Greg, who's you know, technically MGTOW, right? And I've made a lot of anti MGTOW videos, again, attacking the philosophy, not the individual people. Okay. And, and I like Coach Great. He's he's an awesome guy. I, I had a couple of calls with him after. And, uh, you know, he's, he's just a stand up awesome guy, right? And so, but if, if me and him dialogue about things, we have different philosophies, right? I, I'm, I definitely have a, a lot of different viewpoints and he, we have a lot that overlaps, but I have a lot that, that I would disagree with him and be like, no way you're wrong about this. And then he would disagree with me about, which is fine. But by, by people listening to us and hearing what we have in common and then hearing what we, what we disagree about that those, those men become more educated because they can make decisions for themselves. Not, not only because they hear different viewpoints and then they can assess for themselves what is correct. And, and, and it helps us to learn as, as well to have our, our wisdom tested against someone else, but also because it shows them how we can communicate as men and not, you know, we can have differences of opinion. We can have differences and not even like each other, but we can get along and, and, and discuss things and, and, and move things forward. So, so that's my solution is just to say, look, let's just have more people come to the table. Let's just cross pollinate more. Let's get some yeah. different people. I'm happy to have anyone on my channel. This is my open invitation, right? MGTOW, it doesn't matter, right? I even, you know, MGTOW dictionary reached out to me yesterday. I was like, yeah, jump on a stream with me, man. Like, let's, let's like, as long as you're not going to like jump on there and just start attacking me, let's have a discussion. I want to hear your viewpoint and and I want to discuss this, right? Uh, so, so that's that's my solution is, is for us to do that. And again, we don't all have to get along. We're not going to be all you know on the same uh, wavelength. But but having open dialogue that's that's the thing that that's the thing that we should be emphasizing because that's the thing that the left and the cancel culture and everything is trying to shut down. You know, free speech, so, open dialogue is is key. I have I agree with this sentiment and I support it. I also have a counter that I think is important. Um, and I, so, for example, not not just to say these things, but to really walk my walk, right? Walk my talk. Uh, at 21 convention, I'm a fierce defender of free speech. A lot of the speakers have pointed this out. For example, Michael Foster was really surprised that I let him say whatever hell he wanted on 21 convention. He's he's open to speech talking about that. He was really surprised and impressed. At the same time, he disagreed strongly with Jesse Lee Peterson, who is a fellow pastor reverend of Christianity. That was surprising to me. So there are disagreements. I do agree strongly with open dialogue. What I will say in counter is that there are guys in the manosphere, Rollo is an easy punching bag on this. He preaches consistently about open debate and open dialogue. Search his Twitter, search his blog for those terms. Open debate, open dialogue. What does he do? He blocks guys and excises guys from his sphere of influence who disagree with him. The second John Samez decided to speak at 21 convention, Rolo didn't call you, he didn't text you, or as far as I know, he didn't say anything to you, he just fucking blocked you. When Sean T. Smith, a clinical psychologist, debated Rolo Tomasi on Richard Cooper's channel, Rolo got his fucking ass kicked, just like on Stefan Molyneux's channel. Stefan Molyneux interviewed him, Rolo was a little butthurt bitch, you can see him get flustered, go watch it, it's probably on Bitch Shooter Library on Stefan Molyneux's channel. It's just like the Sean Smith interview. Sean Smith took Rolo to fucking task and he can't handle it. What happens? All of a sudden, after Stefan Molyneux interviews Rolo, he disagrees with Rolo. Stefan Molyneux is evil. What happened to Sean T. Smith? What happened to that train wreck show? That shit's gone. Ever since he debated with Rolo. Rolo can't tolerate it and he pushes buttons. Well, but LARPing in public, right? Open dialogue, open debate, cancel culture is bad. What does he do? He cancels and blocks everybody, either literally on Twitter, or he excises them out of existence in the manosphere like Sean Smith. All of a sudden, Sean Smith is, what do they call it? Person non grata, right? After he debates at Rolo, go watch it. It's on Cooper's channel. That shit's gone now. Rolo doesn't endorse him anymore. He attacked him. He attacked Dr. Shanti Smith. 
and Dr. Robert Glover and Coach Greg and Coach Red Pill started more shit with fucking anybody than anybody in the manosphere with people, right? And then he talks about open debate, and open dialogue. No, he has no one around. He is a dude who writes all this fucking crap in blog and video blogs four hours at a time, talks about how valuable open debate and dialogue is. He's riding on the coattails of genuine guys like you, John and Coach Greg, who really mean that shit. Like not only you and Coach Greg having disagreements, like I said, Coach Greg and George Bruno, they really were not getting along. They have blocked each other on Twitter. I was like, this is a problem. Like, I need you to speak and interview each other and shit and hang out and not fight. Like, get a fist fight or physically or whatever, right? You need to get along. Let's see if we can work this out. And they did. Thank God. It's because you guys are serious. There are guys, though, who latch on to those buzzwords, free speech, open debate, open dialogue, and they don't mean it. They literally don't mean it. They know when they're saying it, they don't mean it. They're not confused. They're not like half in, half out. They don't give a fuck. But they know these people that in cancel culture, especially and in the manosphere, when we're all under the gun, we're all two seconds from getting our channels fucking deleted for bullshit reasons like Molyneux. No community strikes, right? Dude's dead on YouTube forever. So it's there's a lot of buzzwords and there's power to these buzzwords like hustle, hustle, okay. hustle, hustle, do the work, do the work, do the work, open, free speech, open debate, open dialogue. Some of the guys saying this shit don't give a fuck about it. They just say it to get to virtue signal. It's in-group, micro, or niche virtue signaling. Not generalized virtue signaling like we're used to on the culture. It's targeted and specific to build loyalty. It's fucked up. And there are examples of it, again, like I said, with Rolo and Stefan Molyneux, when Stefan Molyneux interviewed Rolo, and when Sean Smith debated Rolo Tomasi on Cooper's channel. Those are pivotal points where Rolo turned on those dudes. He was cool with Molyneux, an interview with him, all of a sudden Molyneux's dead. I have texts from Rolo saying, don't ever bring Molyneux to 21 convention. I'm out immediately, right? Trying to dictate to me who's going to speak at my convention. Not even discussing with other speakers, dictating. No Mike Cernovich, no Stefan Molyneux. I'm fucking out instantly, forever, right? Sean Smith, fuck that guy. He attacks him in public, right? Oh, but I'm the victim. Rolo Tomasi, free speech, open debate. It's all bullshit with these guys. Okay, let, so let's are real talk, guys and bullshitters. Let's talk about open debate. To me, open debate, when a debate is over, okay, when you can walk away and still disagree, it was still a good debate, but it shows the character of a man after you debate. Uh -huh. To me, that's really important. We had a debate with a vegan guy, and I respect the guy. The guy was an incredible debater on vegan lifestyle. I put I put a short video. I was, wasn't short, but I put a video out just on that debate. But I give that guy a lot of credit for sticking in there and debating. I didn't, we didn't really, we didn't um, um, degrade him. We didn't do anything like that. We, we debated him and I give him a lot of credit because it showed his character. The, the character of a man is shown after the debate, as far as I'm concerned. If you can walk away and still disagree, that's character of a man. So when somebody debates something, to me, it's important how you leave that debate. Does anybody agree with me on that? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent for sure. Yeah, I got no problem with that. Yeah. yeah. But I'm gonna we're gonna knock it off here in a few minutes. I'm gonna put the uh, put this put the invite in the chat, and this is to this is to uh, this is to Rolo Tomasi. This is to anybody that. Want to jump on, Donovan? If you're watching, um, you are welcome. We got a few minutes left. I love so, how Donovan LARP yesterday that he would buck up to Rolo in private. That never happened. Rolo's or Donovan's massively. His balls are in Rolo's purse, just flat out. I mean, I believe that to the bone. That's that's <laughs> ironic too, because uh, you know, back in the day, Cooper and I have texts of this to, to the nines. Cooper was constantly trying to boot Donovan out of the Redman group because Donovan was a hothead. He would scream and he would rant and curse and get his own channel striked and deleted off YouTube. And Cooper's, Cooper never liked Donovan, so he tried to get him booted uh, constantly. It was me and Rolo who had stuck up for Donovan, and Rolo was like half the time. Uh, anyway, I thought that was funny, though, but yeah. It's a lot of, there was so much bullshit in that fucking stream yesterday. It was amazing. It was like this endless waterfall of lies. It's like, how much can I vomit lies out of my mouth? It was amazing to watch. It was, was eye-opening. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Gonzo, man, you got any input? I'm sure you do. I'm just trying to think of, uh, you know, because obviously, like, the, like there's a case by case basis when stuff like this comes up. When there's beef sizzling, um, when there's a nice steak cooking, you know, I, I just keep coming back to to that that poem "If" by Rudyard Kipling. 
Yeah. I think that's just what you got to do. I think that's what you got to do in these situations. Like you just like, you, you know, the light can't exist with the dark past a certain point. And so, you know, there's going to be rifts. There's going to be things happening. There's going to be, uh, you know, and, and that's fine. It's just, it's the reaction. And the problem we have, uh, it seems like with this whole situation that sparked this, it seems like, um, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, uh, female nature flowing around. There's a lot of overreaction. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of that taking place. And so just as man, I think that's, that's what we got to do. You know, uh, we just got to have, um, we, we, we got to watch ourselves. We got to watch ourselves. Um, and what I mean is that, you know, we have to, we have to look for, for those things like anger yeah, and, and vengeance and those types of things and see what, see them for what they are, which is just, you know, their, their thoughts, their, their emotions. And, uh, you know, we need to be able to, to, to control them and not, and not overreact. Now I'm, I'm going to say something now. I know Anthony well, personal friend of mine, good friend of mine. Okay. He was here Sunday. He was here on Valentine's day. <laughs> Tony is my Valentine. Yeah, <laughs> his mom. I gave his mom a marga hat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big one. Mom loves you for that. Um, Amazing. So, so, hey Tony, I want to interrupt you really quick. Speaking ahead. of mer- speaking of merchandise, I just wanted to hit on this, Anthony. I want to get one of those. Uh, the the future is patriarchy. I love the shirt. The shirt? Oh yeah, it's on your YouTube channel. The shirts. Yeah, easy. The yeah. Hats are harder to get. The shirts easy. Go to our YouTube channel. Okay. All right, cool, man. Cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, anybody else, the, the future is masculine. All that stuff is on the YouTube channel. But, yeah, you should all have a hat, a shirt, and wear it proudly. That's for sure. So, um, so anyways, wh- what I was getting at is I don't look at, like, I knew, I knew the reaction from the video. Anthony really didn't react from the video from Donovan last week. But I knew the reaction from yesterday's video was going to be it was going to be harsh and it was going to be crude. I do not look as I know Anthony because I talked to him. He was not angry. He wasn't angry at all. This is this is his response. It's I don't look at as it's Anthony's reaction. Anthony doesn't react. He responds. And there's a big difference between reacting and responding. Okay. Donovan, what did you expect? I mean, truthfully, what did you expect? I mean, that's, you know, we've been, you know, people have, you know, bitched about the Rolo thing. And you know what? I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. It doesn't bother me. It's like being on social media. You see something on social media. How many people have to comment? Okay. When I see something that I don't like, or something that might irritate me, you know what I do? I scroll on by. I just move on past it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't affect me. But Anthony, I think, is protecting his brand. And his response to Donovan is going to be to protect his brand. And yeah, is he going to be tongue-in-cheek at it? Yeah, we know that. We know that. I mean, and, and to me, that's okay. That's my opinion. That's okay. We knew there was going to be memes coming out. It's mm-hmm. just, it's, it's the response. And do we laugh at those? Yeah, I think everybody does. <laughs> Maybe someday there'll be a meme about me and that's, I'm okay with it. You know, mm-hmm. um, the, 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 again, the, I'm going to go back to the issue was referring to the doxing on MGTOW dictionary. How about not mention their name? Because what happened, you can say a certain channel, a certain MGTOW channel. How many guys that watched your video, John, and watch Donovan's video, went to MGTOW Dictionary and now know Donovan's name. Now know everything they didn't know about him before. To me, that's like doxing yourself. What do you, what do you think about that, John? I, I, I'm 
completely against any any doxing of ev mm -hmm. any kind any kind I of agree. that someone doesn't want to reveal like revealing that information about them in in any way especially if it involves uh someone who isn't in the ring right uh, a wife a daughter uh you know yeah, for sure. a friend family member but um you know some some people you know if you have a problem with what someone says this is my whole thing like you have a problem with someone says let's let's talk about what they said let's not talk about the person themselves let's not talk about their family or their you know let's just talk about what ideas right what 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 ideas what things are, are they saying that's incorrect are they giving bad advice is that that's that's the level that and think about it right this is the other thing is right <clears throat> the people that are listening to us our audience the men that are listening to us they don't care about the fucking debates that we have between each other or whether or not someone's in, you know whatever their personal like i mean sure everyone buys into drama but what they care about is us talking about ideas and philosophies and what is correct that's that's where you know we're we're guiding men and so i don't know that's the thing i would say it's like if we can try to keep it more about the ideas and the and the philosophies and not about the people that that's better for everyone and sure i mean it's funny you know a little meme or something like that <laughs> I, I you know again i consider donovan to be a friend of mine i would not betray him i'm not you know what i mean I, I, you know, I consider that to be, <laughs> you know, when I saw that, I was like, damn it, Anthony, don't do that. But, you know, but, but again, can't we, help it. it's too funny. It's too I know good. we can take some of those things lighthearted, right? I think, you know what I mean? I think, I think if we all just take a little bit of things, a little bit lighthearted, someone throws a jab at us. Okay. haha, ha, Funny. Not a big deal. Then things will get better. And if we just avoid talking about people, but talking about ideas again, that's and I try to again. I, I've I've made mistakes in the past, but for the most part, I try to say, okay, you know, this this channel or this person said this thing, or I talk about choosing signals. I don't talk about the person who promotes choosing signals, right? When I disagree with choosing signals, I think that's better because that that's that's just it avoids the thing because someone hears their name, right? And even when it's not even meant in a bad way, they say, why is my name drawn into this? And then it starts the whole cycle up again. So I don't what happened to Steve? Steve got on here because his name was attacked. Like, why did Donovan go after Steve? Like, I don't know. Steve was pretty pissed about that. I think, you know, Donovan's thing with me is a separate thing. I don't know. Is, why was he going after Steve? I don't know. Like, you know, I think he's, I think I have, I have ideas about why he plays this way. He tries to kind of create a cloud of uh, context that's like very artificial. Like, oh, MLD went after Joker. I didn't approve of that. I'm not perfect. You know, why did Steve go after this guy? Blah, blah, blah. I think a lot of that was a smoke screen to spend the next 45 minutes bitching about me, to be honest. He kind of did the same thing on a smaller scale in his original video back in January, about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. That's my opinion on why he does that stuff. Um, I did have a follow-up comment for this I wanted to make about what Tony was saying earlier. Uh, I'll get back to it in a minute. Brain fart. It's getting late. John, John what, what is your definition of philosophy? A philosophy yeah. is uh, the way that you you live your life, right? So a guidance for for living your life, for making correct decisions in life. Let's say that okay. it's the search for truth, search for mm -hmm. wisdom is really what philosophy is. It's your view. Now, how many philosophy debates are there? Okay, a lot. Yes. So so when you know when I've done all sorts of interviews and conversations with you, AMS, Coach Greg. Uh, Sean T. Smith, it's a philosophy. It's mm -hmm. it's their thought process on whether it be dating or lifestyle. So how does a guy like grasp on to the philosophy that 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 he he will embrace? How does a guy do that? Well, the the key thing and you know seneca talked about this actually uh, a lot is that you have to listen to other people's philosophies but then your duty as a man is to form your own Mm -hmm. to, to not just parrot what you've heard, not to just adopt someone else's philosophy, but to come up with your own philosophy in life, right? To, to synthesize your, your own thing. And, and so that's, that's the critical thing. And, and this is where, again, right. We, we talked about this, I think at one time on, on the stream on, on your channel about, about the, about the kind of the, the cultish nature, right? The brain or where a lot of the problems that I have with some of the schisms and philosophies that are being 
preached out there, you know, things like MGTOW and Black Pill and things like that, is that it is a it is a group think that that it's encouraging men to not think for themselves to just use a, a bunch of uh, rehashed vocabulary, a lot of hatred towards towards women or calling guys simps and cucks and stuff like that. That is it is all just like a a script, and these guys are just wholeheartedly adopting this philosophy instead of becoming independent thinkers. And again, that's why, again, I fall back to the idea of open dialogue and debate. This prevents us from having these monocultures and 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 it causes people to think because guess what if you're if you're like a subscriber to my channel and you're like yes bulldog mindset that's the philosophy for life i 100 agree and then i have someone on on my channel who has a slightly different philosophy and their shit makes sense and we're talking together then you're like well wait a minute hmm i'm not sure maybe i don't dis maybe i don't agree with everything that bulldog mindset says maybe you know this guy's got a point too but if you didn't hear that guy then you're like oh no no bulldog mindset says the truth he's the gospel it's it, not, nothing else is, it matters is it's not correct. These other guys on these other channels, I, I don't need to listen to them because they're wrong. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So that's why open dialogue is so important is because it, it stops us. It, it causes men to to hear conflicting philosophies and to hash it out and then to form their own from from that. So another man's philosophy will eventually fail you. Eventually. Truth. Yeah. And well, I, I wanted I, I wanted to touch on a little bit. One, one sec. Profex. Yeah. Profex says, why are you posting the stream yard and then kicking me when I joined? Well, because I asked, it was specific people that I was inviting on the stream tonight. So it's nothing against you. You are welcome. You are welcome to come on Saturday night and debate. But this is a specific topic. And there's only specific people that I welcome to the stream. That's why I put it in there. But you are welcome to come back Saturday night. So go ahead, yeah. Anthony, or... or Whoever yeah, was I was just saying. Uh, I uh, wanted to address the the point of cutting people from when they need to be cut. And yes, people need to be absolutely. At, there's a certain point that that you have to remove people out of your your business. You know anything, but I believe in going about it in such a way that it's uh, quiet, quietly removing people, uh, because uh, it can get. It, it can fall back on you if you're not careful in a lot of ways. Um, and anger is something, too, that uh, I like what Gonzo said about anger. Uh, we have to we have to evaluate ourselves as men that we're not coming from places of anger, because anger, as we all know, a lot of these young men out here are dealing with anger. Their, their mothers are ang angry mm -hmm. against, you know, their fathers. And so all they hear is this anger stuff. All they see is this retaliation kind of thing. Um, but anger is something we have to be very mindful of. And I just want to throw that out there. I have uh, two follow-ups. I remember my thing from earlier. It was uh, following up on what something John said. John was talking about the memes and, you know, the stuff I put out, uh, which is really par for the course, right? I mean, who really didn't see that coming? Come on. <laughs> One of the reasons I post the memes, though, it's a very small amount of what I post. People get, I think it's like reticular activating system, activation system kind of stuff. The memes are emotionally charged and they either love them or kind of hate them. They're very polarizing. So they see a meme that represents literally like, you know, 2.1% of the content or le vastly less even considering videos. And they get really triggered by it. And they're like, oh, you're posting memes all the time. It's like, actually, I'm not even remotely doing that. But this is the only thing you remember because you have emotional attachments to the people that the memes are targeted at. Mm -hmm. So you throw a hissy fit and you scream at me and, you know, you're so immature, blah, blah, blah. I don't, who cares? Anyway, one of the reasons I post the memes uh, is to polarize people. It's to actually get people to unsubscribe and get off my channel. I don't want them. I don't want them as subscribers. I don't want them as fans. I don't want them as customers. If you are so butthurt by a funny ass meme that makes you laugh and then you're just angry at me for laughing at it, like you're you're angry for a natural response to something that's genuinely funny. You don't belong on my channel. You're a bitch. You're a weak, pathetic little beta bitch. Yeah. I, dude, locker room talk. I grew up playing football and shit and like you know, the locker room talk where Trump get accused of. That's like a new term we have in our in our lexicon today. Mm -hmm. But locker room talk goes beyond talk. It goes into like kind of like little fist fights and people fucking around. Some someone gets a black eye or bloody nose. Like men that actually in, in real life with sports and stuff and other shit like that, shit happens, dude. And yeah. sometimes it goes too far. That's the point. It's just men being men. It goes too far sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't and it's just funny. Sometimes it goes too far and it's not funny. Mm. That's just part of being men. That's part of conflict. That's part of men with testosterone engaging with each other is conflict. It's very natural and healthy and normal. 
And the constant suppression of it is because the manosphere is filled with betas or conflict avoidant, psychologically conflict avoidant as a lifelong strategy for living life. They yes. really avoid conflict, especially with women. That's why women are repelled yeah. by them. Women love conflict. They, the conflict is your dick going in their vagina. They want to <laughs> lose that conflict and get fucking slammed. That is the, that, that's a lot of game. Do they sense that you're gonna, there's, there's going to be emotional rapport conflict with them and you're going to dominate and just fuck the shit out of them? If they don't feel that from you, they don't want to fuck you. They don't want to breathe with you. They don't want your fucking sperm. They don't want your, their fucking eggs impregnated by your shitty beta sperm. So the manosphere is filled, honestly, with like 80, 90% betas who are damaged and hurt and wounded in different, different ways and different degrees. It's not everybody's fucking shit show, but some people are. But the conflict avoidance is a very consistent theme, and I don't like it. It's really weird. And the polarization is why I do that. The guys who are, they, you know, L, they type laugh out loud and emojis and shit. That's great. You know, if you don't disagree with me and you think the, ma the meme's in bad taste, that's fun. But if you're going to get like this unhinged tirade about how I'm an evil dream emperor because I post memes that make people laugh, <laughs> you're just a loser. <laughs> get evil, off my channel. Evil dream emperor. Get off my channel. I don't want you. <laughs> you're a fucking loser. Go watch somebody else's videos. I don't care. I don't need you. We gain, we've gained 8,000 subscribers in the past four weeks. You're, you're replaced in seconds. Get the fuck off my channel. So the memes are actually a filtering tool. They push people away. And they build loyalty, I think, too. The, the only thing I'd say about the locker room thing is that the difference here is that it's, it's public. And so people see it like in the locker room, you know, yeah, yeah, we yeah. get into a rumble, we push each other around. We like, you know, it's not, but here we're kind of representing men and, and it kind of, you know, that's the there's a lot of men though. watching us. That's the yeah. I mean, Trump grabs women by the pussy and they, they love it. <laughs> and he says that, and that's, that's locker room talk. And guess what? That's also real life. But so I see, think there's a connection there. Trump's a good example because as, as much as I, I like Trump, he would have been more effective had he toned down some of that, right? Maybe, because if maybe. You, yeah. the same exact principles that he has, because he, I believe he was a really good president. I believe a lot of what he wanted to do, great stuff. Would he have gone further had he not, not been as aggressive as far as like, uh, if you use different words, if you use a little bit more tactful, right? And again, and I think the same thing with avoiding conflict, right? Uh, you could accuse me of avoiding conflict. I don't avoid conflict. I'm I'm happy to have conflict, but I try to have it in a way in which is uh, which does not bring uh, attacks and, and emotion into it. And instead, let's 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 have conflict. Like I'm not afraid. I'm not going to steer out of it. Believe me, if I want to avoid conflict, I want to come on this stream. I want to done this stream. Like I'm, you know, I'm jumping on wherever because I, you know. But, uh, but my way of dealing with it is to say that let's have discussion, let's let's debate, let's have right. You know, I'm not pulling any punches. I'm 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 telling you what I think. You know, Anthony, and and because I I trust you as a man can respect that and handle that. And the way that I'm Thank saying you. it, I, I trust that you know that I have a high degree of respect for you. And Thank so you. I can disagree with you on you know, let's just like I'm pushing back now, which is not avoiding conflict, but I can do it in a way that you still know that I respect you and i think we make more progress that way that's all i'm saying i do think the I'm, memes are funny i i, I will say that that's that's i'm fun. down yeah. i'm down with your position i have a yeah. slightly different style i'm much i like to be more bombastic i really like trump's style you have a fair point though and i think you can make a fair argument for that position whether or not in the end it's right mm -hmm. a lot of you're not the only person to say that maybe if you had toned down this and that and done things a little bit differently that's one of the ways that I think there's a more legitimate argument argument to be made rather than the generalized uh, armchair quarterback. Oh, I could have been a better president than Trump if Trump had done this and that. No, some of the stuff is way too specific. But yeah, the tone is a generalized thing that I actually think I, I actually think he could have been a lot more vocal about a lot of things, a lot more uh, polarizing Trump. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about. Yeah, he could have done a lot more. It was with really words, immediate. with words, yeah, words, and like uh, getting, getting, re you know, saying things that gets a ton of reactions. He could have done a lot more than what he did. But who's more polarizing than Trump? I mean, that's technically possible, but there's no man alive that's more polarizing than Trump that I know. Yeah, of. yeah. I mean, Wait now, how high are you going to go? Comment, there was a comment made that you think you are Trump. Yes. Yeah, I heard Donovan keep saying that. He keeps saying <laughs> that shit. That's like a dig he makes. I don't. I don't. Who cares what he fucking thinks? It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. I, I'm just. I like, I like I'm just stating a comment. Maybe. I mean, I'm just yeah. recapping. Is all I'm doing. I'm recapping, yeah. and and you know, I mean, what was said, what was said. Um, president Dream, yeah. make him a great again, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah. You are the president of the Manosphere. Just so anybody knows, Anthony Dream Johnson is the president of the Manosphere, and I think John Sanmez would be a great 
vice president for the next year. <laughs> no. So I think he's in. I'm not opposed. I, I prefer Coach Greg, though. I, I um, want to be the uh, the diplomat. The, like what? What is it? The uh, for, foreign, foreign affairs. The, 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 <laughs> yeah, foreign affairs. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm more of the diplomat, I'd say. But well, I'm going to call John the real rational male. Right. There now. we go. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 the reason I say that, John, because you do, you always have a great angle at way you approach things, and and yeah, and you. that's why it was really important for you to be on here tonight. You do approach things from a rational, a rational angle, and again, you know, you're somebody who is very successful. I know that personally. It's something you don't need to do, but I think it's something that you want to do is to help people. And to me, that's really important. I think the same thing about Anthony. Anthony is something that it's a passion for me. Is there is there many people that have done th- done something since they've been 17 years old and pushed forward the whole time? So there's a lot of respect to guys like Anthony and John. So I, I, I respect you guys coming on here tonight and kind of hashing it out. And this this video and this this stream was not for drama. This 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 stream was for sanity, clarity, and reason, like my brother says. And, and and I really do mean that. I have no I I don't have hate in my heart for anybody, and I truly don't. Do I disagree with somebody? Yeah. Do I care that Rolo blocked me after we had a disagreement on Twitter? Absolutely not. It didn't affect me in any way, shape, or form. So I think that this kind of discourse is important in the manosphere to get it out. And disagreements are going to happen no matter what. Nobody is going to agree on everything. But I think the philosophies whether it be the black pill, the red pill, MGTOW, um, what other factions pick up. Gold um, pill. I, gold pill, man. Gold pill is the new one. Yeah, I think it's really important that everything stays under that umbrella. And it is a philosophy. It's a thought process. It's They're searching. Everybody that has a philosophy is searching for something. You're searching for the wisdom that you – I think the – I think – I think when we talk about an end goal, I think the end goal is to help men, but guys approach it from a different a different angle. I think that's that's one of the things that we have to recognize. You know, black bill guys are really realistically, let's face it, they're trying to help guys. I mean, I they think, are. I think one that's of the most the important things, I think one of the most important things about the manosphere is that it's a gang. It's a group of men. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Regardless, this is a gang. Where where any guy can can come into and find something and enjoy and he can stick with it and feel part of a brotherhood. They don't have you know these guys don't have that and uh, they can find mentors in the process. Some good, some bad, but nonetheless, it's a gang. You know. Yeah, it's true. I want to chime in and just say that you know John's echoed. Uh, he says he has respect for me and all that. I appreciate that and I respect him too immensely. And I would say also to more specific comment that I get like a level of emotional maturity out of John. That's honestly like a interpretation or observation that I sense just talking to him, uh, known him for I don't know a year and a half now or something like that, mm-hmm. and I really appreciate that. And I think there's a lot more of that needed in the manosphere. And guys like John Samez and Coach Craig uh, and George Bruno bring that to the table. Like those are the guys that uniquely bring that in ways that other guys don't. You know, I'm 32. Mm-hmm. Like however emotionally mature I am, I'm nowhere near as mature as I'll be 10, 15, 20 years from now. And you guys are a little bit older, and then have your shit together. You bring that to the table. And I wish more Thank guys had that at your age uh, in general and then even in the manosphere. And that it helps move the community forward towards a real unity, not a fake conformity that is posing as a unity, which I'm not a fan of. I want to uh, pat, pat Anthony on the back a little bit. I, re- I found out a couple months ago that you your first convention was in 2008. Seven. 2007. That's uh, that's incredible, man, to know that to know that uh, it's it's been going this far and growing. That's good. That's great. That's impressive. I was impressed about that. Thanks, man. All over the world, too. Florida, yeah. Texas, Poland, Sweden, England, Australia. I think that's it. Yeah, like five, six countries now. Yeah, Love. that kind of that sincerely blew my mind when I found that out. I said, man, this guy's uh he's really been keeping these convenience conventions going successfully. So good job on that. Appreciate that. Thanks, man. Well, I think we'll wrap it up and I hope that I hope that everybody who watched this got something out of this and tried to understand that when men get together, yeah, there's going to be some ball busting and that's part of being a man. If you can't take it, well, you know, buy a box of tampons. I don't know what else to tell you. 
you know, I mean, that's, that's the reality, but that's, you know, you can bust some balls. Everybody's passionate about what they do. Everybody has a mission, you know, John, you know, I know you help guys. You have a great channel. Um, Anthony, I know with the conventions there, there hasn't been anybody that I know that wouldn't want to go back or hasn't repeated going back. It's an incredible, incredible four days. So again, anybody that is watching or watching this in the future, get your ticket to 21. Uh, you'll, you'll enjoy it. You'll it's, not just the spe- it's not just the events though too, Tony. We publish the speeches. We film them super extremely professionally and publish them free to the world. It's a TED Talks of the Manosphere and it gets, um, strangely, it gets a lot of recognition and views, but like people don't remember this. These videos don't have to be free. I could just keep them on a paywall indefinitely. But I don't believe in that. I, be, I believe in publishing them for free and leveraging the internet to reach millions of men. We've reached over a million men just in the past few weeks on our channel. And I love that. I love putting out the speeches for free. It's a big, it's a great business model. The speakers love it. They benefit from it immensely, especially when the videos go viral. 100,000, mm-hmm. 500,000, million views, 2 million in some cases. And I love that. And I don't have to do that. And a lot of guys don't do that. There's been no other conference in the history of the Manosphere that does that either. And that's probably, I think, an important point that doesn't get stated enough. These speeches are filmed at very high expenses and then published for free. And mm-hmm. I don't have to do that. I just believe in that. And I've had speakers as well as shareholders that try to push me to not do that. And for 15 years, I've pushed back on that. And I keep doing it over and over and over again. And I think that's a big part of building the Manosphere is building a library of content from guys who in some cases are dead now, like Stefan Arnio and the private men. Um, I want to get other guys too. I think are getting really, um, you know, as much as I hate Rolo, like I've talked about, I think he's just a massive fraud scumbag, blah, blah, blah. I'm really glad he spoke at 21 because someday he'll be dead. He's kind of old. He's in his fifties, 20 years from now, he could easily be dead. Um, in a, in a strange way, in a paradoxical way, proud that he spoke at 21. So that there's a public speaking record of him speaking at a conference for this community. And the same is true for the guys who are dead, Private Man and Stefan Arnio. And the same is true for the guys who have yet to speak that I want to get to speak. Ross Jeffries is another example. He's old. He's going to die someday. I'm glad he spoke. Uh, I want to get Warren Frail to speak because he's in his 70s. He's not going to live forever. Paul Elam, another guy. These guys are going to be dead someday, and they're legends of this community. And I really want to get them on video and then publish for free to the world. And mm-hmm. that's a big part of what 21 does, too, not just the events. Hmm. Right. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up. I just want to go real quick over the panel. I'm Tony Bruno. You can find me, of course, on this channel. Everybody watching, come back Saturday night, and I will let you on the live stream. It's Get It Off Your Chest Saturday night. You are welcome to come on, get get it off your chest, talk about whatever you want to talk about. You can find me on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, Lifestyle Philosophies with Tony Bruno. I've got great interviews on there with John Sanmez, AMS, that's Alpha Male Strategies, Steve the Dean Williams, Sean T. Smith, Coach Greg Adams. Um, I know I'm forgetting somebody, but there's a lot of them on there. But check me out. Like this video, share it, subscribe to this channel. Gonzo? Uh, yeah, uh, you can uh, find I'm, I'm an artist and uh, a, a musician, but you can find my um, my hot takes on YouTube right now. I'm covering the uh, the Texas freeze as we're right in the middle of it. So you can find that at, at a Gonzo School on YouTube. So that's just uh, Gonzo School. And then, of course, you can find my art. And you can find all that stuff on Instagram and Gab at Midnight Author. And uh, I think that does it. Yeah, this has been awesome. Cool. Man. So, yeah. So as you see on the screen, it says Primal Man. That's where you can find me on YouTube. Monday night, we do Monday night man hour. And so uh, come check that out. It's 8 p.m. Central Time on the Primal Man YouTube channel. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Mantidote like Anadote. And uh, John, back to you. Uh, best place to find me is bulldogmindset.com. If you go there, there is a bulldog mindset quiz to, to see what your bulldog score is. Just take that quiz. I'll send you a score from zero to hundred. There's 10 questions. And then I'll give you some videos and stuff, how to raise that score and improve yourself. So bulldogmindset.com. Awesome. And I do everybody. Yeah. Go to John's channel. It's an awesome channel. Great content. Fantastic content. I couldn't recommend anybody more than John right now, for sure. Besides Anthony also, but let's go to Anthony. Yeah, just, uh, you know, 21studios.com, 21university.com. Also, go to the App Store on your Android or Apple phone or iPad. 
and search for 21 University, download the app, leave a review. I appreciate it. And other than that, just YouTube, type 21 Studios or youtube.com slash 21. We are closing in fast on 300,000 subs, uh, maybe a month from now or so. So fuck yeah. Thank you. It's been a great stream. Awesome. Great stream, guys. Appreciate it. You guys want to stay for the after party real quick. Uh, we'll end this. Everybody come back Saturday night, and I'll see you. Thanks for joining us. Good night.